the Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken, and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited. Come on in. Shalom, shalom. The East is where we're from. The 12 tribes of Israel. Shalom. Come on in, brothers and sisters. Shalom, shalom. 721 BC. Blessings. The Assyrian king, he took us down, we fell. With the great escape we went. To the Euphrates, the Lord held the water still. Come on in, come on in, blessings, blessings. To a land where no mankind dwelt, we went. The twelve tribes of Israel. That's who we be, we be. Manasseh, the Cubans, Ephraim, from Puerto Rico, and Valley from the Isles of Hawaii. Lord is calling back his right, yeah. Zebulon from Panama, Gat, the North American Indians, Simeon, the Dominicans, the highest gathering is That's right, the most highest gathering Israel. I'm Elder Ricard Shiar of the Gathering of Christ Church here with our weekly podcast, broadcast, whatever you would like to call it. I would just like to call it the truth. Shalom and good evening uh, throughout the four corners of the earth. I hope you all are doing well. Please hit the like button while we dive right into this particular lesson, if I can call it that, or even a discussion. Eclipse, time, and the fall of Babylon. Folks. Suppose everything we're witnessing in real time isn't by chance. And I'm talking about bridges being run into, right? An eclipse at a particular date in specific, April 8th. What's going on with Puff Daddy in the midst of all this, folks? Suppose all of this isn't just by chance. Well, hey, if you want to know how, how it all intertwines, stay right here. Make sure you publicize. Let everyone know we're live. Like, share. Do whatever you need to do to make sure you have everyone you know Chime in to this broadcast this evening. Eclipse time and the fall of Babylon. Okay. Now there's so much I have to unpack, so I'm going to just jump right in. But first, let me give all praises to the Most High God of Israel. Ahiah, Ashah, Ahiah. Ahiah, the God of the Hebrews, in the name of Yeshua, the anointed Mashiach, 
whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. His name is Yeshua. I thank the Most High for sending his son, his spirit, uh, that gathers the churches according to Revelation, which was given to John on the Isle of Patmos. And let me say this, and I'm going to say this outright because I don't expect everyone within listening distance to understand what's going to be broken down this evening. He that have an ear, let him hear. He that have an ear, understand this evening. Since we're talking about understanding, it seems that a lot of brothers and sisters who are confused with why we celebrated the Passover last, I mean, the, the weekend before last, they're coming on to our YouTube channels. They're, state, they're stating that they don't understand why we're not dealing with April 22nd as Passover or whatever dates they have. Like you have some Israelite groups doing April 20th. And I hope that this particular broadcast will also clear that up for them. All due respect to you brothers and sisters who are coming on now stating that we're wrong when it comes to time. You don't know our history. You don't know my history in particular. And I really don't blame you because you probably came into some knowledge concerning Passover and New Year's probably within the last five or 10 years. Right? So it's probably whatever group you're following and whatever holy day they're following, you see it doesn't, Align with what the gathering of Christ church is doing and through proxy, you know, you newbies are actually being utilized to fight through proxy, the ignorance of some leaders who haven't found out the truth yet. So all due respect to you, what you would need to know, what you found out, what you found out in our current time to, to attempt to refute us. I need you to understand before you knew that you were an Israelite. I was actually following those times on those same holidays adjusted by Jewish sages. A matter of fact, I was one of the few people who would count from the slither of the moon. Okay. To let everyone know when is the new year coming in according to the moon. All right. So you're barking up the wrong tree, <laughs> right? It's, just, it's a misunderstanding. You don't understand that this is nothing that just came through me. I believed what you are fighting with right now to claim that our time and our Passover is incorrect. I believe the same thing you believe. So what I thought I would do is show you that I understand where you're coming from to edify for you this evening before breaking down the full le lesson. It, but believe it or not, it encompasses, it's within the lesson itself. Eclipse time and the fall of Babylon. Now, how do I know our clock is right on and we're celebrating the Passover the same time the heavens celebrates it while the whole world is in disarray. How do the gathering of Christ church know, right? Well, number one, around between 2012 and 2013, the most High gave us the understanding of equal parts, equal nights when it comes to a change of seasons. And I'm going to go, th go through it with you. Enoch breaks it down. The book of Jubilees breaks it down. And at that time when the Most High gave it to us, right? Listen to this clearly. At that time, it all aligned on in Greenwich, the Naval Conservatory, which is in the West, as well as Sinai, where the Most High gave us the law. It was equal parts day and night where the year ended, what? 
Saturday sundown. So from, from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, listen, Friday sundown to Saturday sundown was the last day of the year. Equal parts night and day. So when Saturday came in, right? Saturday night left out going into Sunday. That began the first day of the year or the first week of the year. And it was right on point, right? Therefore, there was no need for us to adjust from year to year. Now, before the Most High gave us that correct time, I believed what you are following right now. Not only did I believe it, I taught it. And when I can tell you, as a very cogent and thorough teacher, right? Before I knew this, I could break down what you're trying to break down, even on a grander or a more edifying level. I know it's incorrect. I'm going to prove it today. I'm going to show you how it all lines with what I'm breaking down in time, the the, uh, the eclipse, that's right, folks, and the fall of Babylon. Now, it so happens that when I came home from the Passover, now the Passover is 14 days from what? From the beginning of the new year, right? Equal, equal parts night and day is Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. Two weeks later on the 14th day, like is mentioned in Exodus, the 23rd chapter, it's 14 days from the end of winter, which means the Passover falls on the Sabbath every year. It doesn't change. Well, it so happens when I came back from the Passover, look what blossomed 14 days here on the East Coast where I live. Look what blossomed and welcomed me back to my home. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Folks, I took this picture after I flew in from the Passover. Right? Isn't that something? Now, during the dead of winter, this was shrubbery. You wouldn't even notice that there was a bush there. Isn't that interesting? 14 days. Well, this is like, right, believe it or not, the 15th or 16th day from winter now. Plants started blooming. A few that I seen a few weeks after the true new year, equal parts night and day. We've been right on point since the most I've given this. At the end of 2012, 2013. Right? So nature itself tells us the time. Right? That's number one. Number two. I also took my camera. And I said, well, let me see what's going on with the trees. Look at this. Look at this. The trees were budding. Huh? The trees were budding. As if what? The earth is responding to the most high's time. Not man's. See? Now, everyone out there believe that the new year begins April 8th. Why is that? I'm going to show you. And this is for all you newbies who've been learning from other people and coming to fight us through proxy, claiming that we shouldn't be following the Passover yet. Brothers and sisters, Save your comments with that because I've been there and I've done that. I can teach you the moon adjustments and how to keep time. 
I can teach you better than what you're trying to fight me with because I used to do it. The earth itself tell you that we're already in the new year. Look up, look around you. You don't have to wait till April the, to eight, the 8th for them to pronounce what a new year looks like. So why are you confused, right? Well, this is why you're confused. Before, listen to me clearly, before the Most High blessed us with the time, and I'm going to show you out of the scriptures how to figure it out. Every year for the Passover, we would look at the phases of the moon and count 14 days from that to determine Passover from year to year. Okay? I used to do this personally myself. And really the authority of who was actually giving us our time to worship Passover or what have you was coming di directly from the Jewish sages. So let me show you. So this is what we used to do before the most High gave us the truth and put us back on time. Okay. And all Israelites out there, you can all hear this. You can do the research yourself. I'm going to put it in front of you on how Israelites and Jewish people, what they utilize to set their Passover dates. What are we looking at here? What are you looking at here? Well, here's the Griffith Observatory. And as you can see, the new moon of April 8th, let me right of April 8th which comes in 1121 Pacific date time it's what's utilized for the new moon based on a moon phase but in the Bible folks the new moon has nothing to do with the moon in the sky and I'm going to prove it so Hit the like button because I'm, I'm going to break this down so simple that even a child can understand it. Right? So we would go here from year to year and then we would go to sites like this. Sites like this, what are we looking at? We're looking at moon phases. Right? Now you have the Israeli Church of UPK, who, which I was a part of. It was the school of UPK, then the Church of UPK. I grew up in the early 90s as a young man under that doctrine. And this is how it was determined Passover. So what we would do is you would look at what? This is why UPK today will celebrate the Passover, the 20th this year. Because they're going by what? They're going by the April 6th waxing crescent as the new year for the 6th. And this is why they're going to celebrate the Passover. You count 14 days from what they call the new moon, which is their April 6th. And that gives them their Passover. Now, Jewish people this year, check it out. They're not going with the April 6th waxing crescent moon. They're going with their beginning year, April 8th. They're going with the waxing crescent illumination of 43% where it looks like this. Okay. When you count 14 days from April 8th, you get the 22nd of April. That's why the Jewish people are celebrating Passover. What? What boys and girls? Let's show you. This is why Jewish people 
are celebrating the Passover April 22nd. Are you following me here? So Israelites and all that who are coming to me saying that we got this wrong Why we celebrating Passover weeks before April. You don't even understand that you got your time schedules. You're keeping time from Jewish sages who follow the crescent moon. Right? So, but there's more. So you go here. So they're looking at the moon, calling it new moon, making you believe that you're supposed to deal with the Passover according to the moon in the sky. But it's really about the crescent moon here. Right? Are you following me? Right? So I used to do these schedules, folks. To make sure I was following the Passover before the Most High gave us the secrets of the times. So am I right out, you know, bashing or coming against the Israelites who are still doing it the old way? No, because they didn't get the understanding of the times. And they're dealing with scheduling as they have always done under these groups. Whether it be UPK, whether it be IUIC, whether it be any of these other groups, they're dealing with Passover based on the phases of the moon using one scripture in the, apoc in the Apocrypha out of context. Right? So I know what they know concerning why they celebrate Passover the way they do. Okay? Before there was an IUIC, before there was all these other groups out there and all that, even before there was a gathering of Christ church, folks, we were all in the 90s under one doctrine, the Israeli school of UPK. All right. It was you two. Eventually down the line that make everybody believe that all of these groups are separate and all these other things. When it comes to before there was an internet, before there was YouTube, before there was anything, we were all under an old doctrine that was already proven to be incorrect. That's right, before the year 2000. And this is why the Most High have moved his spirit and divided his from those who would be under that old doctrine. Okay, now, more. So since we're talking about the moon, when you go into the moon, so where do the Jewish people get their Passover through the phases of the moon? Well, you're going to find out just like they follow the Babylonian Talmud, that the cycles, the lunar cycles, are from ancient Babylon right now let me show you something here show you something see let me show you the ancient fallen gods set up time as far as following the crescent moon as far as what adhering to time need y'all to see that let me blow this up for you right we blow it up for you. So these are the ancient Babylonians and the Jewish sages deal with time according to the crescent moon, as you can see here. And they're really dealing with Babylonian timekeeping that has nothing to do with the laws of God. Right? So as you can see here, now we can understand why the Jewish people will set their new year separate from the face of the moon here. See why? Because they're really the modern day Babylonian sages under the guise of Aaron's priesthood. The only thing they did was carry the same practices of the Babylonian sages and Chaldees and infused it under Judaism 
But really, Babylonian priesthood is the core foundation of Judaism. So they're hiding the Babylonian priesthood within Judaism and having us believe Torah has, has something to do with it. Right? So Israelites are learning from who? These Israelites, and I don't blame them because if you were brought over here in slave ships and all these others and find out you're the Jews, you would lean on the, those who are claiming to be Jews for certain information that was lost. So I don't blame Israelites for following the Jewish people, but you should have checked the origin of their religion before setting up your holy days like them. Okay. Now, now, okay. Going along understanding this now check this out, folks. This is where it gets interesting, right? The Jewish Passover is the 22nd, two weeks from the 8th. 8th is their new year. The 8th is the new year according to their Babylonian timekeeping, right? April 8th, right? So do you think it's a coincidence at the same time that their time have been set up for April 8th, new year, that there's an eclipse scheduled for April 8th. Now under their dark sages, a lot of things are going on here because why? Because brothers and sisters, I need y'all to see, understand what we're dealing with here. The level of darkness that have come upon us. Before I go there, let me show you something here. This is going to blow you away. The wisdom of the Babylonian moon, God sin. Sin is the God celebrated under ancient Babylon. In connection with the lunar cycles, the God sin, hold up, let me pull it up here. Out of all the gods that are celebrated for a new year under the Jewish Babylonian Chaldeans, they are worshiping or bringing in the observance of the God sin. S I N. The Babylonian moon god Sin is the god that the that, that the elites will be worshiping in secret on on their new year according to the Babylonian schedule April 8th. And this is where they made up their own Passover 14 days from the 8th. But that day isn't being observed, observed in the heavens. That means what? At the same time, the Hebrews, our people coming out of Egypt, Passover, New Year, the same time that we were celebrating Passover, the Babylonian Chaldee priests, the satanic priests of Babylon was dealing with this same cycle at the same exact time, but wasn't it wasn't calling it Passover in the new year. Right. Now, if you think that's something, brothers and sisters. This coming Sunday. This coming Sunday, for those who are in the academy. We actually did what? We broke some news coming out of Newsweek. And the news was, map shows warning for people to stock up food ahead of solar eclipse. Well, this report came out March 18th. Now, what did they know? 
How would a food shortage come to be that can actually be predicted because of a eclipse? What do they know March 18th? Well, it so happens when we pull out this news last Sunday, there's another report. And that's why it's important, brothers and sisters, get in the academy. Okay, there's nothing like it on the earth. We break news in the academy. Well, this coming Sunday, we also talked about the biblical significance of August 21st, 2017. Because don't forget, folks, this was the beginning of when they started spearheading something that would lead to a virus on the earth. And then it says April 8th. 2024 total solar eclipse the warning of coronavirus war earthquakes and famine well it so happens april 8th is the beginning of the jewish new year now what's interesting about this in 2017 as you can see here the path of the sun and moon crossing went this way, right? It went this way in 2017. Well, this year it's coming up from this way and going this way. And when you look at it, the paths that cross, if you look at the path that cross, it makes a cross or an X, which is the last letter of the Hebrew. Tha, which means the end. Right? So from an esoteric Babylonian standpoint, this is what the elites are actually utilizing as signs in the sky to actually do what? Bring forth certain darkness in the earth from the dark side. So some might ask out of nowhere, out of nowhere, how would they know that there would be a shortage of food ahead of the solar eclipse, right? So right before April 8th, we got all this news with P. Diddy and everything else, right? But then we see this out of nowhere. Leading up to April 8th, you can't make this up. Look at this. In advance, but you can't tell me that this looks like an accident. I mean, take a look at the angle in which it takes in order to hit that bridge. Now, I decided to ask artificial intelligence program called Copilot from Microsoft Bing search engine what the effects of this bridge collapse will have on the economy and the surrounding areas. And the answers should be very alarming, but also not surprising. Check this out. So let's start from the beginning, because out of nowhere, a ship under the cover of night takes down a bridge. But does this look like an accident folks let's look at it again it's like there was enough weight as if someone an engineer understood how much weight it would take to move that foundation let's look at it again let's look at it again accident I mean, take a look at the angle in which it takes in order to hit that bridge. Now, I decided to ask artificial intelligence program called Copilot from Microsoft Bing search engine what the effects of this bridge collapse will have on the economy and the surrounding areas. And the answers should be very alarming, but also not surprising. Check this out. An average of 4,900 trucks per day carry 28 billion dollars worth of goods those are now going to need to be rerouted due to the bridge collapse and the greatest impact is expected on hazardous materials 
such as diesel fuel, and we're already having problems with gas prices, this is only going to make things worse and set things back as it pertains to gas prices, but there's more of course. The bridge plays a crucial role in the nation's infrastructure and the supply chain. The disruption is going to have long-lasting effects. Baltimore serves as the largest entry point in the U.S. for large agriculture and construction equipment, including tractors, farming combines, bulldozers, and heavy-duty trucks bound for the Midwest. I'm sorry about that. I'm no sound. I'm sorry about that. I got it. I got it. I'm sorry about that. I got it. I got it. It's fine. Stick with me. Let me know when y'all can hear me. Right. So this is what I'm saying, brothers. I, I got it. I got it. I, I got it. I got the sound is good now. The sound is good. I know the sound is right. It's good. Now. As you can see here, we're here a few weeks out of the new year where the farmers have begun to turn the soil. They have begun to turn the soil. So they're waiting for all of these agricultural things to come into their farms to feed the United States. It so happens, listen, it so happens that this bridge in the port at Baltimore play crucial in the nation's infrastructure supply chain. For what? It serves for the largest entry point in the United States for agriculture, our food, and construction equipment, including tractors, farming compounds, bulldozers, heavy duty trucks bound for the Midwest, the majority of our food come from the Midwest, folks, for the United States. Any disruption to these shipments could impact farming and construction within the United States as far as infrastructure goes. So automatically, there's going to be a scarcity of food where the farmers cannot farm on time for a good harvest. Engineered famine huh so out of nowhere brothers and sisters weeks ago now we're starting to understand why Newsweek said in March March the 18th mid-March it shows warning for people to stock up on food ahead of solar eclipse so what do they know would happen ahead of the solar eclipse Huh? West, the farmland of America. Let's visit that now. Because this collapse comes just during the peak of planting season in the Midwest. And once again, it's going to affect the farming and the food. Additionally, construction activities also pick up in colder climates as the ground thaws. The economic impact extends beyond immediate costs, potentially affecting businesses, jobs, and regional stability. But there's more. The bridge's collapse affects the entire supply chain, including the movement of agricultural equipment, fertilizers, and other essential materials. Farmers may face challenges in receiving necessary supplies, leading to potential delays in planting, maintenance, and harvesting. The economic repercussions extend beyond immediate costs, potentially affecting crop yields, prices, and again, regional stability.
I want to hear from you what you think about this. No, not this predictive programming, but I want to know what you think about this taking place last night and what it's going to do to the country moving forward. Share this video with everyone that you know. Share this with everyone you know, right? So this is going to what? Knock the farmers back from being able to make timely crops for the population of the United States. Therefore, a domino effect. Less produce and all this stuff in the stores. And now they're going to go up on price exp expeditionally. Ex exponentially why so that they can preserve food resources they're going to call it through a state of emergency that they're going to have to ration how much food is actually given to any particular city when it comes to feeding the people at the same time they have allowed all of these people poor people from so-called third world countries into the inner city Know that there's going to be a lack of food. Right? Y'all got that? Lawyer's ready. Let me pull a lawyer in. One second. Let me pull a lawyer in real quick. And thank you. Hit the like button, folks. As you can see, the topic, the eclipse time in the fall of Babylon is our topic. Everyone need to make sure you like, share, and share this with everyone you know. Okay? This may be one of the more important broadcasts to date. All right? So let me pull in Elder Lawyer real quick. One second. And thank you all for your presence. Help us out and hit the like button, if you will. Shalom, Elder Lawyer. Hey, Shalom, sir. How you doing? Okay, doing absolutely well. Let me pull you in. Elder Lawyer in the house. Shalom, Shalom. All right. So I know you've been you've been keeping up up until this point, right? And I wanted to start yes, off, sir. thank you, brother. I wanted to start off by showing brothers and sisters to save them the exhaustion of trying to debate us when it comes to this time. You remember before the Most High gave us the calendar how we used to make sure that we look at the phase of the moon each year <laughs> so that we can mm -hmm. make sure our Passovers were, were actually 14 days after the crescent moon. You remember that, right? Right. Absolutely. So what we're trying to do is let brothers and sisters know because they probably fairly knew, probably got the understanding of the understanding of who they are. We being Israelites just came to the party between the last five or 10 years and think that because they're following the Passover with their particular members, they want to fight against us because their church is doing what we used to do. Right? No. Right. If you believe what you're doing is right, you don't have to battle against us. We've done that already. Just go follow the Passover according to what your leaders is telling you if you believe that's true. But we can prove that's false. But Elder Lawyer, if you understand that their new year is April 8th at the same time of the eclipse, right? <laughs> and the eclipse, right. the eclipse is in a, the opposite direction of the eclipse that happened in 2017 before what? A disease would come on the on the scene in between the two eclipses. So then, what then? What what are we to look forward to as far as disasters now? Well, they warned us in March, right? A lack of food, a famine, and conveniently out of nowhere, right? A cargo ship reams into the foundation of that bridge. And that, that's the area where all of the fertilizers and farming equipment comes through 
to service the United States annually. <laughs> right? So if you think that's a coincidence, huh? Mm. Now, Elder Lawyer, if you will, right? I'm still getting over the, you know, the end of uh, this cold I had. So just to, to show the newbies out there real quick, right? I'm going to put this up there so that they can all see. Some of these people who are actually trying to debate with us, I keep on telling them, brothers and sisters, just pray on it and understand we've already been there with the moon, all right? The moon phases for a new year comes from ancient Babylon. It has nothing to do with how God said, keep time. All right. Again, for those who just came in, this elder lawyer was a bush that was almost shrubs week beforehand. Right. When I came back from the Passover, this particular bush Blossomed, right? Let me bring you in, Elder Lawyer. Hold on. This particular bush blossomed, which was a little bit over two weeks from the real New Year. When I came home from Passover, look what welcomed me home. <laughs> right? So the New Year already have come in, and they're still waiting for April 8th. On top of that, I said, well, let me uh, take a picture of the trees. And out of nowhere, the trees were already budding. Look at this. And they're telling everyone else that their new year is April 8th. When what the Most High gave us in 2012, 2013 was right on point. Putting us on time for schedule so that we can actually celebrate the, uh, the Passover, uh, the Sabbaths, according to God's schedule, right? Now, I told everyone who, you probably missed this, that we used to go to an observatory of moon phases to determine how to set up our Passover and Holy Days each year. We would usually go to Jewish sources to do so. And this is why, mm -hmm. this is why the Jewish New Year is April 8th, right? April 8th. And this is why also, I mean, I mean, their New Year is April 8th and you put 14 days on top of the 8th. This is why the Jewish, this year, the Jewish Passover is April 22nd. Two weeks from April 8th. And what they're using is, like we use, 14 days in the first month is the Lord's Passover. But they're not really dealing with the new month, right? They're dealing with a month set up by the phases of the moon, right? So what they're doing is, like we used to do, we'll go to the phases of the moon, like sites here, and we would look at the new phase, and count 14 days in each year, we would set up our Passover year to year. And this is what Israelites do till this day, a learned behavior from Jewish people that has nothing to do with how God say, follow a new year. Now it so happens that what, let me show you, let me show you here. The UPK and other Israelites are using April 6th with the waxing of the crescent moon for their new year. And when you count 14 days, it's the 20th. And that's why they're doing their Passover the 20th, while the Jewish people are the 22nd, doing it the 22nd, when they're both wrong. Okay? And we're going to prove it. We're going to prove it. All right? So they'll look at how cold it is outside Elder Lawyer and, and say it's still raining, it's still cold and all that and say, well, it can't be the spring. Look how chilly it is. Well, how warm do you expect it to be 14 days from the end of winter living in the West? <laughs> right? If you're living in the West, it's not like 
if you were in Sinai or Jerusalem during the, the change of the year, right? So it's not going to be as warm in the West 14 days from winter compared to the East where the Most High gave us the time, right? So it so happens that we were able to get this information while we were already over there. So there's a clear difference in weather over there this time of year compared to where we live in the West. Okay. Now, just breaking it down because I don't want to, I don't want to debate and argue with our brothers and sisters because maybe they, they thought they were helping us. Maybe they thought that, you know, we didn't know and they just want to help us out, but they don't know that we used to do what they're defending. Right. So this is no slight on what they're doing it because we, we celebrated the Passover in ignorance also. Right. So now let's go real quick. Elder lawyer, if you will. Right. Because I have everything queued already. It so happens. Right. Sure. I have everything queued. Let me go here to make it quite simple here. One second. Give me one moment, Elder Loyo, okay? Let me pull something. Let me put something in the pages real quick. You can stay right there. Yes, sir. While I grab uh, a few pictures or whatever off of Skype. All right, one second. Real quick. Uh, man. Uh, Bishop Kazak from Puerto Rico said there's, there was possibly... There's some speculation that there could have been allegedly some explosives also on the bridge at the same time. They're saying, I don't know, allegedly, I have to look into it. But hey, th that's kind of curious. If so, I don't know. I haven't heard anything like that, but that's deep. All right. Uh, yeah, maybe another, who know, another building seven, seven scenario. Right. But uh, I digress. Uh, one second of delay. Let me grab this. And thanks again, brothers and sisters. Hit the like button for me, if you will. Hit the like button as we uh, dive through this. Because the last thing I would want, brothers and sisters, is, is for you to be out there following the Passover on a day that isn't the Passover. Okay? So let me show y'all a few things, show you a few things here, right? Now, now for the sake of time, right? And this is why each year we put this calendar out. There's no reason for us brothers and sisters to adjust the annual calendar from year to year. We don't have to. Now, when we were following the moon, we would have to do it from year to year and find out where the crescent moon is, according to the Jewish websites, and count 14 days. But we don't have to do that anymore because an annual year is divided in, into Sabbaths, 52 of them, which makes it 364 days days so there's no need for us to look at a moon every year because it's a cycle 52 sabbaths and then it, that's one year 52 sabbaths another year on and on and on and on so the only thing we do is plug in the calendar 364 from year to year without having to adjust it anymore All right and we made it what we made it so that you can actually get the information on how to find it yourself so we don't have to go into equal parts day and night each year, right? We don't have to because we're following from Sabbath 52 Sabbaths, a new calendar. It's quite that simple, right? Now, Elder Lawyer, also, I want to show this real quick, if you will, because a lot of people don't know this and, you know, hold on. A lot of people don't know this, so I thought that, uh, hold on, Elder Lawyer. 
Where are, where are you? There you go. A lot of people don't know this, lawyer, so I thought that I would show some of the information that we had in 2012, 2013. Right? This was the Vernal Equinox 2012, where it says the first day of spring, myth busted. That when they set the calendars up, they initially, guess what? Under the Vatican, they are intentionally giving you a new year that has have nothing to do with the equal parts day and night. Right? They adjust their calendars to make sure that their Easter falls on a Sunday under the Babylonian timekeeping of the moon every year. So they, they told on themselves in the article. National Geographic. <laughs> right? Don't be fooled by the old rumor that the spring equinox, the length of day is exactly equal to the length of night. The true days of day and night equally always fall before the vernal equinox and after the autumnal fall equinox, according to the Jeff Chester, a public affairs specialist with the U.S. Naval Conservatory in Washington, D.C. Exactly when it happens depends on where you are located on the surface of the earth, he said. By the time the center of the sun passes over the equator, the official definition of equinox, the day will be slightly longer than the night everywhere on earth. The difference is a matter of geometry, atmosphere, and language. So a lot of you don't know that we had this article before the, when the Most High was giving us the time. And it so happens that year, it all aligned equal parts night and day. We found out that the Vatican and the Western world authorities have been lying to the whole world, not just our people. Why? Well, this is why. Daniel, the seventh chapter stated, Daniel 7 and 25, they shall think to change times and laws. How did they do it? By throwing people off, by keeping time annually, using the moon only. Now, why is that an issue? Hold on one other way. Let me explain this. Why is that an issue? Well, an annual lunar year, when you look at it, it's six months, 30 days, and six months, 29 days for a complete annual lunar cycle, which comes up 350 four days annually. It comes up 10 days short. Right? So it comes in two, 10 days short. So you cannot keep time like that. Right? In essence, in essence, and I'm going to show you, right? Let me go here. Right. So Israelites and Jewish people do uh, the month predicated moon only, which comes up 10 days early each year. And this is why their Passovers fall on a different time of week from year to year. But how would that be possible if they were following 364 days or what? You got it. Sabbaths, according to how the Most High gave Moses. It will be at a fixed time if they follow 364. But because they don't follow 364 and it comes in 10 days earlier, each year their Passover and New Year falls on a different day. It could be Wednesday this year. It could be Friday next year. It could be another day of the week next year. And the Most High is not the author of confusion. Right. So what they should have done was understand that the moon follows the sun. They aren't stationary. They're moving throughout what the gates around between heaven and earth to minister unto those who live on the earth. The earth doesn't move. Everything else does. Now, what they were supposed to do, like it was commanded Enoch and all the righteous and guess what Abraham even took this knowledge into Egypt 
they were supposed to deal with the sun first in conjunction with the moon that follows it. You right? Are you following me? He that have an ear, let him let them hear. Right? So, Elder Lawyer, if you will, because I'm going to jump right back in, because we have some stuff on why they're using P. Diddy and all that as a distraction, but I'm going to get there in a moment. But before I go mm -hmm. there, Elder Lawyer, let's now, using the Bible first, using the Bible first, if you will, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. Uh, Elder Lawyer, if you will, let's get... Uh, Genesis 37, verse 9. Genesis 37. Genesis 37, verse 9. Okay, hold on. Let me pull you in, Elder Lawyer, real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, where are you? There you are. Right. So what I'll do, here's the Bible. We're edifying for those who are fairly new. Because what I'm trying to do is edify for you, brothers and sisters, so that you're not frustrated arguing with us on our comment pages and all that about why you're during the Passover at a different time. I will never come down on you for, do, for doing it at the time you, your leaders are telling you to do so. Because why? In ignorance, I followed and trusted teachers who, who was giving me the time for Passover too. And I didn't, I, and guess what? I don't blame my teachers for not knowing it at that time. Sills weren't revealed at that time when the high priests and others, they call themselves under UPK was actually giving us a Passover. So I believe they were honestly doing what they thought was right. So I don't blame them either. It wasn't the time to understand it at that, at that point. So I'm not going to come down on brothers and sisters who, who are honestly, you know, in, in good faith, trying to serve the Most High and do the Passover. I'll mm -hmm. never come down on you for that because I know that you're trending towards what the Most High wants you to do. You're not celebrating Easter and all of that. So that's counted for something. Even in your ignorance, the Most High count that as you observe in him and respecting the holy day that was given in the Old Testament to Moses. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I will never come down on a person because they're doing it like the Jewish people because our people, we didn't know. Right? But what I'm saying is just back off from us. <laughs> because we, we know what we're doing is, is correct. Okay, back up off of us and do if you want to follow what your teachers say. I did it. I was under my teachers and I didn't disrespect them when I found out what was going on. When I was no longer amongst them, the most high, he did something where he gave us the truth. And it doesn't discount all the goodness and all the righteousness when it comes to understanding this Bible that was learned by my former teachers. That's why you'll never hear me ever. I will never, right, offend them by speaking negatively against individuals who were my teachers. You will never hear me do that because what? It's dishonorable. They gave me the most of what they had at a time the most high needed them. He used them. So I'll still honor them as my, as my teachers who, some of them are no longer with us, but all in all, I'll never disrespect them because what they did have led us to where we are now. Okay, so I needed that. But what I'm saying is that what the, the students, students of the old school who just learned their Israelites and all that for the last five, 10 years, they come to us as if they can show us something, not realizing we can teach them how to follow the lunar moon better than they can actually refute our teachings because we've done it already. Okay. So now let me edify for you as we uh, go to the next segment, if you will. Elder lawyer, uh, 
I said Genesis 37, right? Yes, sir. Genesis 37, verse number nine. Now, what? why are we going here? Well, we're going here to show you that the moon, the moon, when it comes to new moon, has have nothing to do with the moon up there in the sky. Right? Now, let's go to Genesis 37, verse 9. Read that, please. Yes, sir. Genesis 37 and 9. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. So this is Joseph. He said he had a dream. And what was in the dream? The actual sun and the moon. So you know it's speaking of the actual moon here, according to the Hebrew. Right? So, we go into the Hebrew here. 37, verse 9, right before you all, we find the word moon right here. Hebrew 3394, we click on it, and that moon is, that, that name of the moon is Yorok in the Hebrew. Yorok. Right? Which means the actual moon in the sky. So when it talks about new moon, when the Bible speaks of new moon, it's not speaking of your rock. Right? How do we know this? Well, elder lawyer, if you will, we're going back to the English now. And let's now go to 1 Samuel 20. Verse 18. 1 Samuel 20, verse 18. Read that if you will. Yes, sir. 1 Samuel 20 and 18. Then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon. Is the what? Tomorrow is the new moon. Now, is that determined from the moon in the sky like we see how Jewish people keep the time of year let's see we go here back to the hebrew the 18th verse and let's click on moon here taking you to school right moon is an entirely different word here right in first samuel it's Hebrew 2320, which is not your rock, but what? Kodash. Kodash. Kodash, which is what? Look at it. New moon, by implication, a month. A month. So it really says in the Hebrew, new month. Now, why is it called a new month? Because it's the month that signify a changing of season. Because every month, there should be 12 new months, if that's the case, right? But it isn't. There's only four new months because it, it indicates a changing of season. It have nothing to do with the moon in the sky. <laughs> okay. It has nothing to do with the moon and the sky. So the so how is a new month determined? Right? So this is where, and we gave this chart to everyone who actually got the cal got in the calendar. But even before we had the calendar, we taught this online. Right? As you can see right here, right? New moon or new month separating winter from sp spring. Separating winter, right? Let me show you. Hold on. As you can see here, Separating winter 
from spring. So you have what? Four intercalary days that separates a complete 364 day year. The Most High is not the author of confusion. He never made 365 and 365.73 or what? He never made any of that. That's confusion. He never did any of that. According to the heavens, it's right on point, regardless of how man continue to disrespect God by not following his Sabbaths. Okay? So you got four intercalary days, right? That separates the seasons. That's what it means by new month. New season that's divided in Sabbaths. See? You got 13 weeks between this intercalary day and this intercalary day, which changes what? Right here, spring to summer. And then you have another new intercalary day that separates what? You got it, summer from autumn here. Then you have another intercalary day that separates what? Autumn from winter. And it goes on and on and on. It's the cycles that have been set up since the beginning of time. It's quite that simple, folks. See, now how is this day determined? A new year? When at the very end, it's equal parts night and day here. And that separates what? That's the last day of the year. And then, that's right, Saturday sundown is new year. Saturday sundown is new year. Saturday to Sunday. It's quite that simple. Right? And it keeps going. That means the last day of the year is Friday to Saturday. And then the new year pops in. You got it. Saturday sundown to Sunday sundown is the first day. Period. It's quite that simple every year. Y'all got that? And then 14 days from right here which is winter, like we did a, a couple of weeks ago, is Passover. It's 14 days from right here. And this is why our Passover was last week. And, and now you got the Jewish people waiting to do their Passover, the 22nd. When really, it's not the Passover. It's the Babylonian timekeeping system honoring the God sin of Babylon. The Babylonian moon god Sin is actually celebrated or honored under the lunar cycles. Right? Ancient Babylonian. Right? And it's on the walls, right? In in the ancient Mesopotamia. They were dealing with the dealing with the goddess worshiping the goddess because the moon represents female. She's the lesser of the greater lights. And this is why under uh, uh, Persian mythology, as well as Islam and ancient Babylonian uh, 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 priesthoods, you find the crescent moon and worship in honor of the ancient evil God sin of Babylon. S I N. And that's why the Jewish people use the phases of the moon to determine their, the beginning of the year. It's an honor of the God sin, right? S I N. And this is why a lot of these people are the perpetrators of sin on the earth. And that's going to lead us to P Diddy in a moment, <laughs> right? But it's, that's what it's all about folks. As y'all can see. Now, elder lawyer, if you will. Right? In the book of Jubilees. And I have it right here before you. That was given to Moses. The book of Jubilees. The sixth chapter. Right? 
And what I did to help you all out, folks, make it simpler for you, because I have it in front of you so that you can't think that I'm taking things out of context. Well, on the calendar, we actually quote it so you'll understand the times. As far as the calendar goes, read the 32nd verse for me, Elder Lawyer, if you will. We at 632 and 33. Yes, sir. The Book of Jubilees, chapter 6, verse number 32. Yep. Let's read it. All right. One moment. I have to adjust it here. All right. There we go. Verse number 32 says, And command thou the children of Israel that they observe the years according to this reckoning, 364 days, and these will constitute a complete year. Stop right there. They... Right? Tell the children of Israel, don't, don't deal with what these Babylonians, these heathens are doing over in Babylon, these other areas, right? We do 364 days only. We don't care what Edomites are talking about. They weren't given the time. The times were given to our people. And a year is divided into Sabbaths, period. He told Moses not to, not to follow the heathen, right? And it says, and these will constitute a complete year and what? And it says these will constitute a complete year and they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feast. And from its what? And from its feast. And from its feast. Which means if you don't do this, you're going to be following some feasts, but they're not gods. They're not what was given to Moses. I don't care what you call them. Okay. Read. 33. But if they do neglect and do not observe them according no, to his command. No, no, I need you to, it says, it says, and will not disturb its time from, from its days and from its feasts for everything. Read that. For everything will fall out in them according to their testimony and they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feast. Come on. But if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandment, then they will disturb all their seasons and the years will be dislodged from this order and they will disturb the seasons and the years will be dislodged. And the years will be dislodged. Why? Because the moon cycle comes in 10 days too early each year. Now only the devil would have you look at the moon to keep time by itself, knowing that it comes in and knowing that most people don't even have the time to actually count. We just trusted our teachers that they were actually counting. They weren't counting. They were going to Jewish sites and following their Passover based on what the Jewish people were giving them. Giving them. They weren't counting because if you count, that's right, folks. There's 30, when, when it comes to the lunar cycles, there's 30 days, six months, and 30 days, 29. I mean, uh, 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 29 days, six months, and 30 days, six months which adds up to a total of 354 days. That's 10, 10 days short every year. So why would you follow the moon to do New Year and Passover by itself when the moon follows the sun? Right? But if they neglect to do, read. But if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandment, then they will dislodge all their seasons and the years will be dislodged from this order and they will disturb the seasons and the years will be dislodged and they will neglect their ordinances. Now I'm going over to the book of Jubilees, Elder, real quick. And let's go where the Most High told Moses and the Israelites and the elders that we should not observe the moon. Uh, 36. Okay, I'm, I'm, let, let me blow it up so they can see it. The 36th verse. In fact, we can start at 35. 35. Okay, I have it here so they, they all can see it. All right, let me blow it up here. 35. Okay. Hold on, let me uh, blow this up so they can see the whole thing. All right. All right, Elder Lawyer, let's read what it says at 35. 
Mm -hmm. For I know. For I know, and from henceforth will declare it unto thee, and it is not of my own devising. For the book lies written before me, and on the heavenly tablets the division of days is ordained. So the divisions of days are ordained on the heavenly tablets. Read. Lest they forget the feast of the covenant and walk according to the feast of the Gentiles. So it says, unless the Israelites would begin to walk according to the feast of the Gentiles, the Babylonians. Read. After their error. After their after th error means mistake. Read. And after their ignorance. And after their ignorance. We'll start following the Gentiles, right? Who's telling us it's Passover, but it's really not. Because they're not keeping time according to Sabbaths. Right? And walk according to the feast of the Gentiles after their era. Read. 36. For there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon. Observations of the what? Observations of the moon. Observations of the moon. They'll use the moon like the Jewish sages do to determine when a year starts. See? <laughs> It's quite that simple. Observations of the moon alone. Now, I know people are going to the apocryphal and say, well, the Bible says, the, the apocryphal says moons for seasons and feasts. Yeah, it does. But in conjunction to the sun, not by itself. Why? Because look up a lunar cycle of a year and it's 354 days. Right? It says here, observance observance of the moon read how how uh, it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year 10 days too soon it comes in 10 days too soon this was given to us coming out of egypt not to follow the moon but the babylonian satanist priesthood did the contrary and that's why you have the crescent moon in islam and you have the moon being observed for the years under Judaism. It's contrary to our God. It's the worship of the God sin. S-I-N. For this reason, Elder Lawyer, read it. 37. For this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day, the day of testimony, and an unclean day, a feast day. They'll make an unclean day, a feast day. Like everybody think that they're going to go to the Passover on the 20th and 22nd. And guess what? That th Those days isn't being observed in heaven for the fat Passover at all. It already happened. When we did the Passover, it, that's when it was happening. That's when it was going on in heaven also. I don't care what they call it. It's not the Passover. Read it. And an unclean day of feast day, and they will confound all the days, the holy with the unclean, and the unclean day with the holy, for they will go wrong as to the months and Sabbaths and feast and jubilees. Read. For this reason I command and testify to thee, that thou mayest testify to them, for after thy death thy children will disturb them, so that they will not make the year 364 days only. And for this reason, they will go wrong as to the new moons and <laughs> seasons and Sabbaths and festivals, and they will eat all kinds of blood with all kinds of flesh. Thank you. And who gave us the crescent moon? The synagogue of Satan. Say again, let me make it clear before the most high put us back on time. 2012, 2013, folks. Before all of that, folks, I need y'all to hear this and hear this good, okay? Before the Most High put us back on time, we used to go to the same sites these Israelites go to to determine the Passover by using a, the slither or the crescent moon after after. You know, in the spring, we used to go to their sites like this. And we would follow what they were giving us for the first day and count 14 days. The exact what the Most High told us not to do is what the Jewish people under Judaism set up.
because they're really following an ancient Babylonian priesthood worshiping the God sin. So this is why that's right. This is why the Jewish Passover is eight days from the eighth. Let's go to the eighth. The eighth. This is their crescent moon and their Passover is what? April 22nd for Jewish people. See? Y'all see this? It so happens that, that's right, their April 8th is the same day of the solar eclipse. Right? Right on time for the solar eclipse, knowing that it's going to lead to, not the eclipse itself, is a sign for them to get ready for what they're doing in the earth from the dark side, right? And this is why they put out in the news last March, warning for people to stock up on food ahead of the solar eclipse. So what do they know what's gonna happen before the solar eclipse? Oh, who knows? A ship running into a bridge that will actually Stop stockpiles of fertilizer and others getting to the farms that will lead to a famine in the United States. Right on time before their so-called New Year, April 8th. So we know the Passover isn't the 22nd. We are, we've been past the New Year. Okay. But you have the Israelites. Now, the Israelites now, let me show you what the Israelites are doing. They're also going through a crescent moon, April 6th, like the Israelites of UPK and others. Still using the moon like God said don't do. And this is why they are going to have their Passover April 20th. 14 days from the new moon, which is not the moon itself, but it's supposed to be an intercalary new month after what? Equal parts night, equal parts day. It's quite that simple. Now, guess what? <laughs> Even if they wanted to, if they wanted to get this, because I have no issues with any groups in this earth. I, what we're doing is what the most high told us to do. But if they want to get on time, I'll send them a calendar. I'll give it to them free. Privately, without any cameras, any people talking, and I can actually go over with them the error. So that they can get on time with the most high. It's not about them getting down with the gathering of Christ's church. Okay. Period. I would give it to them so that they can, they can look at it and weigh what they're doing. And guess what? There's no way they can see what we're doing is wrong. Because you cannot get an annual year using the moon only. The annual phase is 354, like the Most High told Moses. And guess what? How do we know that's true? Well, if you go to Google right here, just Google it and type in days of a lunar year, of a lunar year. Days of, listen, look, look at this. Days of a lunar, a lunar year. How many days in a lunar year? Huh? Let's see. Oh, look at this here. 354 days. <laughs> so how's you, how's you using a calendar that got 365 days on it as a year, but the moon comes up 354, 10 days earlier, and you're going to set your Passover according to that? <laughs> huh? I need y'all to think it's math. The most high isn't the author of confusion. This is what the sages, the Babylonian sages set up because they worship the God sin in private. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, excuse me. So back, back in ancient times, elder lawyer, those who observed the moon, according to the New Testament, were called what, Elder Lawyer? They were called lunatics. 
They were called lunatics. Lunatic. A lunatic. Now, what is a lunatic, right? Let's, Elder Lawyer, let's go to Matthew because now you're dealing with the phase of the moon, which is unstable, which makes people unstable. This is why Satan would have us go with the moon. How confusing can you be when the Most High says, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy? And it, it, our feasts, our years, everything is adjusted into 52 Sabbaths. What better way to confuse people than to have each year you're celebrating a Passover on a different day of the week? That's a lunatic, right? So let's go to, real quick, Elder Lawyer, if you will, let's pull up the Bible again. Right? That's a lunatic. Now, let's now go to Matthew, Elder Lawyer, if you will. Hold on. Matthew 4. Matthew 4. And let's read Matthew 4 and the 24th verse, Elder Lawyer, if you will. Help me with that. Yes, sir. This is Matthew 4 and 24. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and, he, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic. Those which were lunatic were brought before Christ. See, we're here to heal you. Okay. Now, when you look at the word lunatic, Matthew 4 and 24, right? I'm going to go there real quick. Lunatic in the Greek, 4583, right? And it states what? Look. Uh, Selenia Zuma, right? And it tell you right here, look. To be moonstruck. <laughs> that is crazy lunatic. Moonstruck. Why? Because the moon falls out of phases. It's inconsistent from year to year. It's the weaker of the two lights. It's no different than if the most high ordered man to be the lead and they'll put a female as lead it would cause dysfunction disorder it's crazy it's lunacy and it's the same if you put the sun before the moon when it comes to keeping time huh mic drop that's a lunatic right and those who are keeping time according to the moon Huh? According to the moon are lunatic. These are the sites that people go to, folks, Jewish sites to find out when to celebrate their holy days and Passovers. And you think it's a coincidence, Elder Lawyer, that the eighth if you will, Elder Lawyer, the 8th, according to the Jewish calendar, begins their new year at the same time of an eclipse. And 14 days from the eclipse is their Passover. And out of nowhere, what happens? It was told us by the news articles and all of that, again, I don't mean to be redundant done to here because I know some people missed it. It was told to us by Newsweek that they could expect a food shortage ahead of the solar eclipse. The solar eclipse so happens to fall on the Jewish New Year, April 8th. Not our New Year, their New Year from whence they actually set Passover two weeks from that time. The first eclipse was 2017 and a disaster came within its wake. And then another 
Now the eclipse going to come separate where it meets separate. And when you put it together, 2017, 2019, uh, 2024, it's a cross, which is the Hebrew word thigh, which means the end. And out of nowhere, out of nowhere, right on schedule, according to what they told us in March, to get ready to do what? Stockpile food, stock up food. The major pathway for our food reserves and agriculture is blocked with a bridge being taken down in Baltimore. You can't make this up. looks like an accident i mean take a look at the angle in which it takes in order to hit that bridge now i decided to ask artificial intelligence program called copilot from microsoft bing search engine what the effects of this bridge collapse will have on the economy and the surrounding areas and the answers should be very alarming but also not surprising check this out an average of 4,900 trucks per day carry 28 billion dollars worth of goods those are now going to need to be rerouted due to the bridge collapse and the greatest impact is expected on hazardous materials such as diesel fuel and we're already having problems with gas prices this is only going to make things worse and set things back as it pertains to gas prices but there's more of course the bridge plays a crucial role in the nation's infrastructure and the supply chain the disruption is going to have long-lasting effects. Baltimore serves as the largest entry point in the U.S. for large agriculture and construction equipment, including tractors, farming combines, bulldozers, and heavy-duty trucks bound for the Midwest, the farmland of America. Let's visit that now. Because this collapse comes just during the peak of planting season in the Midwest. And once again, it's going to affect the farming and the food. Additionally, construction activities also pick up in colder climates as the ground thaws. The economic impact extends beyond immediate costs, potentially affecting businesses, jobs, and regional stability. But there's more. The bridge's collapse affects the entire supply chain including the movement of agricultural equipment, fertilizers, and other essential materials. Farmers may face challenges in receiving necessary supplies, leading to potential delays in planting, maintenance, and harvesting. The economic repercussions extend beyond immediate costs, potentially affecting crop yields, prices, and again, regional stability. I want to hear from you what you think about this. No, not this predictive programming, but I want to know what you think about this taking place last night and what it's going to do to the country moving forward. Share this video with everyone that you know. Did that, did, did that look like an accident to you? <laughs> that thing came reaming. It's as if, folks, they they understood based on calculations how much weight would be needed to, to take this down. I'm not saying it, it happened. I'm just saying it doesn't that that doesn't look like someone is trying to stay away from that foundation there. Right? And it's you know, it's a it's probably a coincidence right before the eclipse, right? that the main highway waterway that actually brings in what we'll need for food the farmers will need for food this year is conveniently blocked and rerouted where now all of the crops in the united states are going to be what off schedule less food so it's time for us to start storing food like i've been telling people because we're going to have to get through a three and a half year famine and I'm going to be going into that. I'll be going into that in the future. But understand, there's nothing by chance. Newsweek put this out March 18th of last month. Right? I mean, of this month. 
a few days ago, excuse me. They put this out a few days ago, March 18th, as if they knew something was coming. Map shows warning for people to stock up on food ahead of solar eclipse. Huh? Okay, it's showing 2022. Hold on. Oh, okay. 2022. Let me let me see what the moon phases are this year. Hold on. Someone says it's showing 2022 moon phases. Let me see. Let's go to 2024 here. Okay, let's go to 2024. Right? Even though I'm showing 2022, it doesn't matter because it showed you right here. Right? I'm going to show you why it doesn't matter. Still the same. I'm going to show you. It doesn't matter because April 22nd, April 22nd is Passover, according to Jewish people. Right? What's 14 plus 8? Huh? 22. So it's still the same. Let me, let me see if I can, even though it shows 2022, it's still, the math is still the same. All right. The math is still the same. Even if I was to put in 2024, the math is still the same. All right. Now, real quick. Let me see. Let me, let me get 2024 real quick. So eighth, they show the crescent or the slither. Let me see. Let me get it here. Mar April. Let me see. Let me grab it here. April 8th. Let me get it here. One second. Okay. This year, the phase they're using is the Israelites are using, thank you. The Israelites are using, I'm glad someone told me that, thank you. The Israelites are using the slither of the moon for the sixth, right here. The slither of the moon is being used by the sixth, which also is the beginning of the crescent, right? And the Jewish people are using this moon this year, which is the eighth, a new moon. But then when you go 14 days from there, it's what? You got it. And I'm glad someone pointed this out because, because this is the moon that's being shadowed with the sun for the eclipse. And that's what they're using for the new year this year. I really appreciate, thank you for, for letting me, for tipping me off with that, brothers and sisters. But guess what? It's still the same. Because this is going to be their pass over the 22nd. You look at the 22nd. This will be their pass over the 22nd. Okay. That's the Jewish Passover. Thank you for, for uh, tipping me off with that. Elder Ramar. All right. But it's still the same. They're using the moon when the, when the Bible says you can't use the moon because it comes up 10 days early each year. That's lunacy. All right. Now. Thank you. Thank you for correcting that. But it's still the same when it comes to the numbers. All right. Y'all got that. Now, elder lawyer. Yes, sir. How do we know when? A new year comes in. Well, real quick, the book of Enoch states what? The book of Enoch states, let me put it here. 
pull it up here one second. The book of Enoch states here, when it comes to the last day of the year. Okay, I'll read it. On that day, matter of fact, I'm with them to see it here. On that day, the night decreases and the amounts to nine parts and the day to nine parts and the night is equal to the day and the year is exactly 64. The book of Enoch confirms what's taught in the book of Jubilees also. 33. And the length of the day and of the night and the shortness of day and of the night arise through the course of the sun. The course of the sun, these distinctions are made. Now, like I did with the moon, I said, well, what is a, what is a solar? A solar. How many days in a solar year? Right? How many days in a solar year? Right? Just for edifying. And it says, right, how many days in a solar year? Right? And you know what it is? Look even though they're incorrect with the 365.25, it's 364, folks. So really, we're supposed to be using the sun that leads with time. See? Not the moon, because the moon comes up 10 days too short. Now, Elder Lawyer, if you will, let's go into the book of Enoch real quick. I have an, I have an Enoch here. Hold on. Have to get through here. I have an Enoch in front of us, in front of me here. What page are we dealing with? Page 60. Page 60, right? A matter of fact, let's go to, to chapter 74. Chapter, right. chapter 74 of the book of Enoch, right? Now let's start at chapter 74 and let's, let's read all the way down. Let's read it. Yes, sir. From the top, verse one. And I saw another course, a law for her, and how according to that law she performs her monthly revolution. Read. And all these Uriel, the holy angel, who is the leader of them all, showed to me and their positions, and I wrote down their positions as he showed them to me. And I wrote down their months as they were, and the appearance of their lights, so 15 days were accomplished. Come on. In single seven parts, she accomplishes all her light in the east, and in the single seventh parts, accomplishes all her darkness in the west. Speaking of the moon, read. Verse 4, and in certain months she alters her settings, and in certain months she pursues her own peculiar course. And in certain months she, she does what? She pursues her own peculiar course. The moon does what it wants to do. It's out of it's out of sync. That's why it must be led by the sun. Right? The moon is the female of light and compared of the stronger. That's right. You got the masculine and the feminine. So sometimes she does what she wants to do. <laughs> Read. Verse 5. In two months the moon sets with the sun and those two middle portals, and the third, and the fourth. Come on. She goes forth for seven days, and turns about and returns again through the portals where the sun rises, and accomplishes all her light, and she recedes from the sun, 
and in eight days enters the sixth portal from which the sun goes forth. So she enters the sixth portal from which the sun goes forth. Read. Verse 7. And when the sun goes forth from the fourth portal, she goes forth seven days until she goes forth from the fifth and turns back again in seven days into the fourth portal and accomplishes all her life. And she recedes and enters into the first portal in eight days. Come on. Verse 8. And she returns again in seven days into the fourth portal from which the sun goes forth. So it's the moon following the sun, folks. Read. Verse 9. Thus I saw their position, how the moons rose and the sun set in those days. Come on. And if five years are added together, the sun has an overplus of 30 days. And all the days which accrue to it for one of those five years when they are full amount to 364 days. Amount to how many? 364 days. 364 days. So it's saying in three years, the sun is 10, is 30 days ahead when it comes to time. <laughs> Now imagine if this keep happening, how far the moon will fall back. Right? Read. 11. And the overplus of the sun and of the stars amounts, amounts to six days. Read. In five years, six days every year come to 30 days. And the moon falls behind the sun and stars to the number of 30 days. So now it's 30 days behind in time. So how can you use the moon by itself to keep Sabbaths and Passovers. Read. Verse 12. And the sun and and the sun and the stars bring in all the years exactly so that they do not advance or delay their position by a single day until we turn. Hold up. By a single day. <laughs> it, it, it says read that last part again. Elder lawyer and the sun and the stars. Yes, sir. Verse 12. And the sun and the stars bring in all the years exactly so that they do not advance or delay their position by a single day unto eternity. By a single day unto what? Eternity. That means the constellations that show forth the seasons as well as the sun is never off course. Only Satan would use the moon. <laughs> to show forth holy days because it's the oh it's all it's it's out of balance it's off course see <laughs> everything else falls in place according to this time schedule not the moon read but complete the years with perfect justice in 364 days and it says up into what an eternity so in case you didn't know they even did math to show you if you were to begin to use the moon, how many years would actually, they, it'll be more years added on time because the moon comes in 10 days early. It would throw everything off course. So they even gave you the math to know how far you would be off if you started following the moon alone. And it says, and the Most High says, it's this way, time will be kept like this from the heavens until eternity which means what we don't have to adjust anything <laughs> we don't have to adjust anything okay oh the lawyer they say you're pretty low uh say something all right mic check one two test test mic check one two test and test and mic check one two it's better now all right so we don't have to adjust. Those who follow the phases of the moon would have to adjust from one year to the next. Why? Because they are disobeying the ordinance of God when it comes to keeping time and Sabbaths by using the moon. Now, Elder Lawyer. <coughs> yes, sir. I, I don't think we have to even break down anything else on this. What do you think? I concur. All right. So if anyone have any questions going forward, the only thing they would need to do is go to this particular lesson today. 
eclipse time in the fall of Babylon and, and, and you'll be all right. You'll know. At least you can leave us alone. Okay. Don't get mad at us if the people you are with are following the Passover according to what the Jewish people have given you. That's not our fault. Okay. Now, since we're talking about sin, the God of sin using what they would call their new moon, right? Their new moon, the Jewish sages, sages are actually following, according to the Babylonian priesthood, the God of sin. The Babylonian moon God, sin. Right? And it's on the walls within ancient Mesopotamia that you can, fall, you can find till this day, where the priests would bring their sacrifices and all that before the Mesopotamian God, sin. Right? Now, this was be, and folks, keep in mind, Abraham wasn't dealing with this God. Nimrod was. Okay? And this is why they do their timekeeping according to the schedules of moon. Right? The schedule of moon. That's a Babylonian way of keeping time. Right? So, <clears throat> now, that's on them. We're, we're back on point. We think the most high for giving us the time. He that have an ear, let him hear. Leave us alone when it comes to talking about when the Passover. If you're dealing with the moon alone, you're not following Passover. All right. Now, now speaking of sin, elder lawyer. Isn't it convenient that in the midst of them doing things that could cut off the food supply in the United States going forward, that there's a convenient distraction you're going to raid P. Diddy and everyone talking about P. Diddy. And then in the midst of everybody looking at P. Diddy, boom. The food shortages and all these others, right? So let's talk about this real quick, elder lawyer. Because going into prophecy, the Bible tells us that tells us at the very end in Matthew, I mean, in uh, Revelations 18, he states that that people are going to mourn, not just Babylon being hit, but all of the greatness when it comes to agri when it when it comes to the art, when it comes to music, celebration, ingenuity. America was, was once the beacon for the whole earth, and guess what? It was because of the culture that was created out of chattel slavery that distinguished America from the rest of the world. That they would no longer hear the great music and all of this, right? And now we look at what, what has happened to those, what's happening to those who were responsible or utilized by the enemy, elder lawyer, to destroy cultured, spiritual, righteous music. And that leads us to what's going on with Puff Daddy. And some people might ask because, hey, let me pull this up. I had a lesson in the midst of what they call the pandemic. Right? Because in the midst of all that, they started coming after Kyrie, right? They started coming after uh, uh, Kanye West. And in the midst of this elder lawyer, they promoted P. Diddy online and all that, claiming that Puff Daddy has now been moved into billionaire class. And they was using him against Kanye, who was stating that we're Israelites. Kyrie that we were Israelites as a convenience. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. But folks, they was going to circle around when all of this was done to come after Puff Daddy. P. Diddy. Now, I'm not going to go into all the things that he's dealing with because I have a video for that, right, that I'm going to just touch on. But I want to show 
brothers and sisters, what you probably didn't see straight out of revolt T TV. Hold on. Let me, let me pull it out straight out of elder lawyer revolt TV. And this is fair use for educational purposes only. This is religion based and we're only using this to prove a point. But years ago in the midst of the so-called pandemic, when all that was going on and the election season was happening, they had the whacked out crazy black lives matter nut jobs running around these, these straight nihilist causing confusion throughout the United States, right? Black lives matter have nothing to do with our people. We have nothing to do with that Marxist satanic organization. Let me stress that it's an anti-God movement of straight nihilist. Okay. But in the midst of this, right? Elder lawyer, look what P Diddy said a little over three years ago. If Trump gets elected, I, I really do believe in my heart there'll be a race war. That's why this message is not just to black people. You know what I'm saying? This message is to, to, to everybody. You know, this man is really trying to turn us against each other and put us in a situation. America messed up. Now, mind you folks, Revolt TV was also funded by, as some stated, uh, left-wing money when it comes to politics. They are to toe the political line for the Democrats. Revolt TV would be utilized coming around every voting season, right? Rock the vote, vote or die. P. Diddy was being utilized politically, right? But look what he said against Trump. Now, I'm going to tell you this, even the other nations, white people know not to speak publicly against a figure that can actually destroy you. The Bible tell you that you're not supposed to go against a man that's, that has more riches than you. The Bible tells you this. So let's see what P. Diddy said over three years ago. talking for a minute about you know chopping it up and some real talk you know what I'm saying where yeah. it's not but the whole social media effect like when I look at the videos of like you know um Malcolm Martin Stokely you know what I'm saying I wish I could have seen a black man black man conversation I couldn't have talked to nobody about what we're going to talk about but you you know what I'm saying that's, that's a testament to your journalism man you, you and this is fair use he's here with Charlemagne he said it's time for a black on black conversation. At the same time, he was having private meetings with moguls who was going to use their finances to help our community. Now, the issue here is that, that the enemy have another plan for our communities. The same plans we're witnessing now replacement. So they was about to get in the way politically P Diddy, him and other rich black men to slow up what they're doing in our communities right now. Inspiration to me, bro. I want to see where you at. I want to yeah. see where you at. You know, you sparked a, a crazy conversation. Uh -huh. And you told everybody to hold their vote. Yeah. I want to see where you at with it. Mm -hmm. So, a couple of months I told everybody hold their vote hostage. A lot of things have gone on since then. None of us expect. He was saying years ago, brothers and sisters, to hold your vote. P. Diddy. I think this president has done a great job of fair use of rattling America. When you move in fear, you don't have any leverage. Mm -hmm. The way I felt before is the, is the way I still feel. Things have got too serious of a point. And seeing what's going on, white men like Trump need to be banished. Oh, oh. Y'all y'all see this? They had the cameras rolling. And he said this. 
And you know the elite is looking at this and saying the hubris of a man who we've put in position to actually speak against one of our elite. White men even know better than this. So eventually they was going to circle back around to him. Especially at a time where Donald Trump is leading in all the polls. Oh, yeah. I want to see where you at with mm -hmm. So a couple of months I told everybody, hold a vote hostage. A lot of things have gone on since then. None of us expected. I think this president has done a great job of of rattling America. When you move in fear, you don't have any leverage. Mm -hmm. The way I felt before is the, is the way I still feel. Things have got too serious of a point. And seeing what's going on, white men like Trump need to be banished. What? That wasn't wise, my brother. Even if you're going to talk about helping your people. You don't threaten publicly a sitting president. No, that's not wise at all. You don't have to say anything. You can just come with your people and do what you need to do to help your people and understand how to use diplomacy like they use publicly. One thing about the enemy, guess what? They, they may think to banish you and say you need to be banished, but you'll never hear them tell you. Van he's, he's, he's totally banished, vanished. Wasn't smart. You know, you sparked a, a crazy conversation. One more. When you told everybody to hold their vote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, a couple of and another thing is politically, I don't have a dog in the fight, so I'm not here to talk politics in particular today. But what I'm telling you is, you even have Charlemagne coming around and saying that blacks wanted a, a that blacks in America wanted a black vice president. No, nah, no, none of our people have ever said anywhere that they wanted a black vice president. So you know he's speaking for. The DNC, as far as Charlemagne concerned. I hear what he's saying. He's a spokesperson for the DNC. All right. So, but I'm not politically, I'm not into that. I vote for Christ. All right. <laughs> Once I told everybody, hold a vote hostage. A lot of things have gone on since then. None of us expected. I think this president has done a great job of, of rattling America. When you move in fear, you don't have any leverage. Mm -hmm. The way I felt before is the, is the way I still feel. Things have got too serious of a point. And seeing what's going on, white men like Trump need to be banished. Lord Elder Lawyer, that wasn't wise at all. That wasn't wise at all. And uh, you know eventually they're going to circle around because one thing about Trump or politicians in particular, they don't forget anything. I mean, look what happened to Epstein. Right? And there's a correlation between the two. Right? That's more, <laughs> hey, that's more than a coincidence with what I'm going to bring out in a couple of seconds. Right? This is deep. He threatened. And at that time, you know, there was no resistance. No one said anything about it. But, you know, they were, they were actually logging this and saying, we're going to circle around back to him. Because he's not a threat just to the, the Republicans, according to what he said. Right? He was saying that the Democrats, that, that we're to hold the votes from the Democrats, and he was talking about setting up a black party. Check this out. 
that way of thinking. Fair use. It's real dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, this man literally um, threatened the lives of us and our families about going to vote. Mm -hmm. Stand back and stand by. Stand back and stand by. Yeah. We're in a war. We're not taking this like it's a war. We're taking this like, oh, we're in a presidential election. Mm -hmm. No, we're in a war of love versus hate. The number one priority is to get Trump out of office. The tribe of people that have the responsibility and really should be scared to death of this man is white people. Mm, explain. If this man is elected, we're not standing by no more getting killed. We're not scared of anybody standing up and standing by. We're on the verge of a, a race war. Mm. Do y'all hear this? How many of you knew that this particular, these sentiments was out there years ago? <laughs> and look at Charlemagne's uh, uh, eyebrow right there. <laughs> Charlemagne is like, oh, you know what? Hey, I, I'm going to separate myself from this scenario here. All right. You in trouble, my brother. Look at his eyebrow. Look at his hair. That thing is almost near where his, used, his hairline used to be. Right? He's like, man, what are you saying? To get Trump out of office. The tribe of people that have the responsibility and really should be scared to death of this man is white people. Mm, explain. If this man is elected, we're not standing by no more getting killed. We're not scared of anybody standing up and standing by. Fair We're use. on the verge of a, a race war. Mm. If people in America want a race war, they'll not vote. I'm an independent, first of all. When I vote, I try to do what's best for my community. Let's, let's be clear on that. You, you, you're, not, you're not standing behind your decision to hold your vote anymore. You want people to go out there and vote. It would be irresponsible of me to um, have us hold our vote hostage. Mm -hmm. But it would also be irresponsible of me to just let this moment go by. The world is watching. And not do everything I can to make sure that going forth that we are part of the narrative. Mm -hmm. That we own our politics. Um, and so I'm launching one of the boldest moves. Listen, and then he's telling people what he's going to do. Now, mind you, folks, this is in the midst of certain parties that politicians and musicians all know existed when it comes to how P. Di P. Diddy gets down. Right? On the party scene. that I've ever launched. So now he's telling them that he's about to launch something that's going to disturb either party. That we're a part of the narrative, mm -hmm. that we own our politics. Um, and so I'm launching one of the boldest movements that I've ever launched. And it's called Our Black Party. Okay. It's time for us. And he told him, we, we, not only that, folks, in order for him to say this, that means discussions are already underway with big wigs amongst the black community, amongst the black elite who could fund this. So many dominoes are going to fall here. Not just him. Is to have our own black political party unapologetically. Because right now, if you look at the debates, we're not even a part of the conversation. Not at all. We're not a part of the conversation. We don't have any political power. We don't have any political leverage. And so we started our black party um, with some young, fearless black activists, elected officials, and I've stepped up and put the money behind it. Mm -hmm. This is an elder lawyer. This must this must have been after Clarence Avant the black godfather of in Chicago. It must've been after he di he died, this happened. 
because I can't see in good faith Clarence Savant advising him to say this publicly, knowing that they'll, they, 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 no, there's going to be some political blowback stating these, you're threatening billionaires. You're threatening the, the movers and shakers who have placed you in position. And this is what happens when you operate without consoles. Like, no, brother, you're not to speak about anything, right? Based on your lifestyle and what's going on with you right here, the only thing you can contribute towards what we're talking about is your finances. So someone would have advised him, like, nah, you got finances. You can make a shell company and we can deal with things certain ways where you can finance the movement, but you're too volatile and compromised to be to become a public figure politically right so someone should have told him no brother be quiet this ain't this this isn't your lane is the 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 biggest threat and the the only option that we have right now as far as making a change, taking our own self-responsibility and accountability to be educated and empowered with our vote. So what's the goal for our, our black party? Our black party's number one goal is to unify behind a black agenda. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. You could be a part of the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, you could be an independent, but if you're black, you wasn't born Republican, you wasn't born Democrat, you wasn't born independent, you was born black. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we have to seize our political power. Because now, in everything he's saying makes sense. He isn't wrong with his outlook politically, seeing the, the, de the destruction of our people. But all in all, you have the elite looking at him and saying, brother, we use you to help destroy your people. We use you. So if they see you, you're becoming uh, uh, unwrapped to a degree that now you're going to threaten people who put you in position after all you've done to your own people, then they re they'll realize, hold up, at any time, this guy can spot out some stuff that'll, that will expose us too. This is unhinged, right? So they looking at it we're like, well, hold up. <laughs> you put a mic in front of this guy and it'll just, it'll take one of our companies. So he became, he became a problem. So now elder lawyer in the midst of the time where our food supply is about to dry up. What are we seeing on the news? What are we seeing on the news? Huh? What are we seeing on what's going on in the news? Fair use. Fair yeah. use. Fair use. This is for educational purposes only. What's going on? on the news now, right? Let's see. So now, years later, now that Trump is about to be placed back in office, and we all know that there's no way Biden will beat him, but if they try to do something to disturb this election, it could spiral into straight chaos and civil war. So now that the power the pendulum of power is swinging towards Trump who was threatened years ago, as far as they're concerned by P Diddy. This sounds eerily familiar to what happened at Epstein Island. Fair use.
Security conducting a raid at a house in Holmby Field Hills, believed to be connected to Sean Combs, the rapper and music executive, perhaps being linked to a sex trafficking investigation. Let's go live to Stu Mandela up in Sky Fox right now for more. Stu, what do we know? Yeah, I heard her say we're live. Fair copy. use. Copy, copy. All Look right, there you see Sky Fox overhead of this home where, again, we are seeing Department of Homeland Security investigators making a search of this. Now, I need y'all to look at the timing of this in the midst of what you would call the eclipse and at a time where they have actually destroyed the future of, of food within the United States with that bridge being taken out. A perfect time distraction. Now, here's the reality of the matter. Because the same time he's being moved out of the way, you have now all the Jewish circulations circling the wagons against Candace Owens. Why? She's on a war path. Right? So Elder Lawyer, she chimed in on what's going on with so-called P. Diddy. And I'm going to show you how this all comes together. Right? Fair use, educational purposes only, and folks, for the sake of the channel, we're going to make sure that we just give you stills so to protect our channel. All right? We'll give you stills. All right? Hold on. Let me, let me go here. Let me pull up a few things. Right? One moment, let me get this all prepped. Let me get it prepped. Bear with us, brothers and sisters. Hey, it's real, y'all doing a great job. Hit the like button for me, please. Hit the like button. So we'll use stills starting at three minutes because why Candace chimed in on P Diddy fair use and then it seemed like an avalanche and he issued a very strong statement condemning them for essentially extortion attempts and trying to murky his name so again you don't know what's real you don't know what's not until this recent lawsuit, and this one's different, guys. A man named Rodney Jones has come forward to sue Diddy, and this is not your average lawsuit. I will say right now, many lawsuits are in fact frivolous. I have fought and won frivolous lawsuits. This person, however, his name is Rodney Jones. He lived, traveled, and he worked with Diddy as a producer, and he is alleging that he has hours upon hours of recorded footage and pictorial evidence, which has been included in this document, to support his claims. And I have to say, these claims seem very credible. Now, to be clear, Rodney, also goes by Lil Rod, uh, is suing Diddy and others, we're going to get to who those others are, for $30 million, claiming that he was subjected to sexual misconduct for the duration of the production process of an album. It is a 70-page lawsuit that has been filed in the Southern District of New York. And he is claiming that while working on the album and living with Combs in New York, California, Florida, other locations, that Diddy repeatedly groped him, touching his, I'm sorry to say this, guys, his oh, whoa, anus whoa, 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 and his... Whoa, whoa. We're not going to talk about what he was touching, but let's get straight to some points that she's going to talk about here. Right, going to the five minute mark, 507. Right, going to the 507 mark. Listen to this, and this is for fair use, fair use only. 
allegations. Everything that I'm going to say after this is an allegation that is being claimed by Rodney in this lawsuit document, which we will include as a link for you guys if you are watching this on YouTube. So let's go through the big claims. Ready? Number one, this is perhaps the biggest claim, is that Diddy and his son murdered someone in plain daylight and got away with it. But there's apparently a man that they know. So these are some of the charges that have been filed with that producer who's coming after P. Diddy all of a sudden out of nowhere. Okay. Now I need y'all to listen because we have to find out whether or not there's, there's a, a team, a power team that's seeking to come after him. And for what reason, right? Oh, that everyone who works with Denny knows that they can call and they essentially will get everything cleaned up. And they are implicating the LAPD in this madness because they produced fake reports. And he's got some real good evidence to back up these claims. He says that one evening uh, during a camp that they were running with several musicians, Mr. Combs and Jay Combs were in a heated conversation with somebody named G. And while this conversation was moved out of the studio and into a restroom that was adjacent Fair to use. where Jones was sitting, he heard approximately two feet away from him again, Mr. Jones is the producer that's suing him, gunshots suddenly ringing out. He recalls hearing multiple gunshots. Mr. Jones immediately went into a state of shock and fear that he would be shot next. He genuinely believed that he would be shot through the door due to how close he was. After the shooting... Now, instead of me going through all of this, a brother is being used as proxy like Cassidy to bring down Puff Daddy. Let me show a picture of him here, if you will. This brother is making accusations against Puff Daddy and it's to assume that after the Cassidy thing, this would be the other shooter drop that would actually allow the government to bring charges against him, right? But then Candace, great journalistic skills, she began to go into a part of what's going on that's not getting publicized, right? Let's go to around nine minutes here. Let's go to nine minutes right here. Nine, 22. And let's start around the Epstein scenario. The connection between Combs, uh, Puff Daddy, P Diddy, whatever the names are now, and Epstein, All right? Fair use. What even is gangster rap? It's a question that I have been asking a lot. It, it seems to me that there is something intentional, that they are intentionally feeding us filth via the media. So she's asking, what is gangster rap? It seems that these people are feeding something intentionally from the media, as if the media has a nefarious uh, 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 plan to destroy our people using this music, right? Look at how she's going to bring this around full circle. And so you didn't go against him when he was bad boy for life, destroying our community, right? Disrespecting our women and all these others and all these different sin parties and all of this. No, mm -hmm. you didn't go against him when he was destroying us. Right? Right. It seemed, hold, hold on, I need y'all to examine this for a second. When he was a menace to our community, you were giving him deals. So mm -hmm. rock deals, alcohol deals, right? Revolt TV. When he was destroying our people, there was no investigation. Right. There was no investigation when he was destroying our people. I just want to note that real quick. Right? 
But no soon as he said that he's going to do something to help our people now that he's in position financially to, to do so. Right? You got to think about this. Now, I believe, Elder Lawyer, the reason why they have to get, get to him quickly and who knows, hopefully he's not Epstein is because I believe based on what he said years ago, he can become unhinged and begin to talk. And by doing so, he could compromise those who's not only in bed with him, no pun intended, but also who showed him the ropes on how to operate within these particular dark circles. Right? Mm -hmm. So that leads right. that leads us, right? That leads us to this. Fair use. And I wonder if a lot of these artists are existing within this blackmail ring. And also, where have we heard this before? Oh, yes, of course, Jeffrey Epstein, who was bizarrely protected. He was clearly an asset of not just the CIA, but also potentially the Mossad, very much involved with the Mossad. Over Over in Israel, and he too had so much access, so much wealth, and he got away with it for years, procuring what very clearly is blackmail on politicians. So what we are recognizing is that this ring also exists within Hollywood. Explosive allegation number three was that there's even a Ghislaine Maxwell, so to speak, a, a madame, and that is the other woman that is listed in this lawsuit, his chief of staff, Christina Karam. I don't know how journalists aren't interested in figuring out who this woman is. Y'all notice this? Excuse me. Do y'all notice this? Now she's exposing. Now, brothers and sisters, she's exposing someone else. Someone who's in the circles of P. Diddy, but of another religious persuasion. Right? Let's go with it. Fair use. Epstein, who was bizarrely protected. He was clearly an asset of not just the CIA, but also potentially the Mossad, very much involved with the Mossad over in Israel. And he too had so much access, so much wealth, and he got away with it for years. Fair procuring use. what very clearly is blackmail on politicians. So what we are recognizing is that this ring also exists within Hollywood. Explosive allegation number three was that there's even a Ghislaine Maxwell, so to speak, a, a madame. And that is the other woman that is listed in this lawsuit, his now, chief of staff. This woman is also mentioned in the lawsuit uh, in front of you all here. Christina Karam. I don't know how. Christina Karam. How journalists aren't interested in figuring out who this woman is. Her job, as alleged in this lawsuit, was to keep Diddy high. I'm going to tell you. And it says in the lawsuit that this woman was one of the people in P. Diddy's circle who was tasked with keeping them high on drugs, allegedly. Now, this sounds eerily familiar. If you remember when Kanye West was talking about a trainer around him that was, cont that was continually keeping him medicated, allegedly. Right? But you don't hear about none of these people. The same way you didn't hear about any of the people who was around R. Kelly during the whole time he was operating in the music business with all of these, as they claim, underage people and all that, with grown people operating with them 
who went down on a one-man RICO charge. Huh? See what this lawsuit says explicitly about her. According to Mr. Jones, during the 13 months he lived and traveled with Diddy, he witnessed defendant Karam openly order her assistants to keep Mr. Combs high. Now that's another one, right? One more, if you will. Off of gummies and pills. Defendant Karam required all employees from the butler, the chef to the housekeepers to walk around with a pouch or a fanny pack filled with cocaine, GHB, ecstasy, marijuana gummies, and Tukey, I don't know if I'm saying that right, that's a pink drug that is a combination of ecstasy and cocaine. It was important to the defendant Karam to have Mr. Combs' drug of choice immediately ready whenever he asked for it. She also ordered, allegedly, sex workers and prostitutes for Mr. Combs. And Now look at that. So a guy come out and say, this woman in particular was actually facilitating a lot of what we call in these parties and all that. That's And folks, this is actually in the lawsuit that's coming against P. Diddy, but no one is talking about this woman here, right? No one. One more before we uh, pivot off of this. Let's go to 1209. those drugs into the liquor when these women are invited over. So why is the media not interested in this story? Well, here is. So she's asking right now, so why isn't the media talking about all these other people? Fair use. Fair use educational purposes. Explosive allegation number four coming from this lawsuit that the person who sits at the top of this ring potentially is Sir Lucien Grain. Because she said there's someone at the top of this above all of these people, higher than P. Diddy, she's a legend, right? Mm -hmm. And look at this guy here that no one is talking about according to the investigations, what was in the paperwork. That means... This man that's exposing P. Diddy isn't just speaking of Puff Daddy, but all those who he witnessed around Puff Daddy. Fair use. He sits at the top of this ring, potentially. The, he, she says at the top of this ring, over P. Diddy, allegedly, is Sir Lucien Grange. She is the CEO of Universal Music Group. He is also being sued. He has also been named as well as Universal Music Group. And he is, as a fact, one of the most powerful men in Hollywood. He runs, again, Universal Music Group, which is huge. Well, Rodney, the producer, was alleging that when Lucian would visit Diddy's house, the two of them would go into Diddy's bedroom and be locked up in there for hours. What, what does that mean? What are we supposed to think of that? By the way, I looked into Lucien, obviously, because I was fascinated by this document, and I find it really bizarre that he completely changed his name. He used to be Michael G., the son of Cecil G., who was a huge tailor in London. I found that in this old article, The Guardian, the headline is, Forgotten and Overlooked Fair How use. Jewish Designers Dressed the Beatles and Changed Global Fashion. And in it, in this article... Oh, now this is journalism. This is journalism, The Guardian. Number four, coming from this lawsuit, that the person who sits at the top of this ring potentially is Sir Lucien Grain. She is the CEO of Universal Music Group. He is also being sued. He has also been named as well as Universal Music Group. And he is, as a fact, one of the most powerful men in Hollywood. He runs, again, Universal Music Group, which is huge. Rodney, the producer, was alleging that when Lucien would visit Diddy's house, the two of them would go into Diddy's bedroom and be locked up in there for hours. What? What, what does that mean? What are we supposed to think of that? That's against the law. By the way, I looked into Lucien, obviously, because I was God fascinated by this that. document. And I find it really bizarre that he completely changed his name. He used to be Michael G., 
the son of Cecil G, who was a huge tailor in London. I found that in this old article, The Guardian, the headline is, Forgotten and Overlooked, How Jewish Designers Dressed the Beatles and Changed Global Fashion. And in it, in this article, there's a picture of Lucien. He was then, again, Michael G. He's sitting with his father, Cecil G. And it's just bizarre that also his father changed his name. Whoa, how far does the rabbit hole go? And also, his father changed. The article tells you that his father used to be Sasha Goldstein. So Sasha Goldstein became Cecil G, who gave birth to Michael G, who is now Lucien Grange. I mean, the totally bizarre rabbit hole if you guys want to look into it. I just thought it was weird. I did a cursory search and found all of that. Uh, perhaps most crucial, though, in the lawsuit is that, unbeknownst to Lucien, Diddy also has a ton of hidden cameras all throughout his house, including in his bedroom, which would perhaps suggest that the blackmail runs both ways. Maybe he also has blackmail on Lucien Grange. Again, I don't know. I'm just telling you what's in this lawsuit and what we can derive from it if these allegations Oh, so Elder Lawyer, I don't know if you're keeping up as I'm I'm playing this. But what she's saying is that Puff Daddy learned to play the game, so he had cameras, secret cameras in his house that could implicate other people who mm. are who are who are higher on the food chain than he is. So if they <laughs> so if they're raiding both of the houses at one time both times what are they looking for is it possible not only are they looking for something for the investigation but to clear up something as far as because they got to get these videotapes and everything right mm -hmm. that's right <laughs> that's right because how can they come after uh p diddy if bringing him down and he have evidence, it can bring down other people that they're seeking to protect. This sounds eerily familiar to the Epstein situation. Mm-hmm. Yep. Get rid of the evidence and next, allegedly, get rid of the uh get rid of the asset, which is Diddy. Exactly. The whole thing is if he was gonna play for the other if he's gonna play for a different team. He was supposed to walk away altogether and leave everything. Mm -hmm. And who knows whether or not they would have allowed him to get out unscathed. Because the more I'm looking into what Candace is talking about, this sounds like mafia. This sounds, Elder Lawyer, like mafia. And what she's breaking down and... Uh, what's the other Whitlock has been breaking down for the last couple of uh, weeks. I, I think I, I don't know if I sent you the video where Whitlock broke down Tupac what's going on in the music business that really all of this is led by some type of perverted as they call it this a gay mafia or something operating. Mm -hmm. So to have something on people not to expose the satanic circles. So where does this, this leads us at? Well, they're pulling the plug on Babylon altogether. And this is Bible prophecy that on top of pulling the plug to make it where there's no work left for Americans, where there's no good cultured music left for Americans. Therefore, nothing to inspire men to defend the country in an army, which in a nutshell have Babylon fold in on itself. This is what it was talking about, Elder Lawyer. What we're witnessing is exactly what it was talking about in Revelations. Let's get there real quick, Revelations 18, before opening up the lines. We're not going to be here long at all tonight, but I wanted to really, you know, uh, just put an explanation point on this at the very end folks, because check it out, folks. This is what y'all, this is what brothers and sisters don't realize. 
they could only operate with America as it under, you know, America in its glory with our people being voluntary servants. The greatness of it is to use the culture, the work ethic, the power in the spirit of God's people so that they can actually stand on top of us in America and receive all the glory from our spiritual resource. That's what made America great. But if you have God's people now uncomfortable with the bottom, seeking to now have a place to rival those who have enslaved us and also have the moral high ground claiming to be the children of Israel, then there's no more resource they can pull from or stand on top of. They can no longer take the credit for the glory of America. Then guess what? If they can't take the glory for it or of it, they'll dismantle it. And we're living in the midst of them liquidating the company called the United States of America. So when you see ships and barge, uh, uh, ships filled with weight running into bridges and knocking stuff over at the same time doing an eclipse, they're using P Diddy and Raiden and all these others. When he had a political stance amongst other elites to use our money to fight against what you're seeing right now. What we're seeing is what was shown to John or the Isle of Patmos, the total destruction of Babylon itself. Right? Elder Lawyer, if you will, let's go here and then we'll open it up. Anything you would like to say on top of that, Elder Lawyer, I'll be more than happy to hear it. I don't want to go into all of it, but Candace Owens, I'm going to tell you right now, folks, and I said it in the academy, if you want to use an analogy, she's the Frankenstein they built. They built her to be used as a convenient tool to say the things they couldn't say without being called racist. But what they didn't know with, him, with her working on the inside, that she started witnessing real time their hypocrisy. Because the things that they would allow her to say about our people, she wasn't allowed to say about their people. See, <laughs> and, and being an honest journalist, she was like, well, hold up. How are y'all going to allow me to say this about our people? But I know there's handlers over the people you got me exposing. Who's even worse. And they was like, well, hold up. We didn't, we're not paying you to expose our people. Now, Candace, we give you a little pat on the head and a paycheck. Do your job. You don't, you, you're not in position to criticize our people. Okay. So that's the Frankenstein they built. But one thing that they didn't bank on, and this is what they hate above all, her Christian values. We're in a spiritual war. And what she's starting to see is that there's, there's the same group, group of people that she's probably witnessing that are operating to push in our people into immorality using the machine to do so. And now after the machine is being, the, they've, engineered, they've engineered a culture of straight chaos amongst our people only for her to come back and be with them to, to tell the world how horrible we are as a people and how we're acting out of immoral and all that. And she has to be the one who state this without what? Without pointing to the fact that all of what she's complaining about has been engineered. So she's waking up. So listen, she's saying, listen, I'll, I'll say what's wrong with our people, my people and all that. 
But also, we're going to get to the bottom of how to fix our people by exposing the people who are actually destroying my people's image through media, through television. So if you're not going to talk about the people, the controllers and the companies that are doing this, then guess what? You cannot use me to talk neg speak negatively about my people because that means this is not solution oriented here. What you're doing is intentionally putting out a negative image that would lead to our people being destroyed altogether, right? Elder Lawyer, let's wrap it up, if you will, Revelations, Revelation 18. Mm-hmm. From the top. Uh, we're going to go straight to, at the very end, when, when, uh, when the nation's when be well her for you know after 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 the the hit yes let, sir i started verse let, let's start let's start at uh the ninth verse yes sir verse nine <coughs> and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lame it for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. When they shall see the smoke of her burning. All of the countries who were able to what? Come over to America and use her as the harlot she was made to be. On top of that, to be able to use us as servants and slaves. Right? To be able to use us. A lot of these merchants come into our cities and guess what? They be doing all types of stuff in the neighborhoods and not telling the people. Not, not outright. I'm talking about when they set up mods in our community, restaurants in our community. Folks, I listen, I was raised in North Philly. I know what they do at night, sneaking our sisters all in the back of some of their stores and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Right? And this is what happens when you deprive of a, a people financially, you can compromise them to give up, to give their morality away, their bodies away for nothing at all. And what's publicized over in these countries is that they can come over and do what they want to do to our sisters. The same thing that they would get hung from a light pole in their countries, but they can do in our country. They come into our cities, come into our neighborhoods and total make total take advantage of our sisters. Read the 10th verse. Verse 10. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Come on. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth her merchandise anymore. For no man buyeth her merchandise anymore, folks. Do you notice that all of the jobs folks have been outsourced? It's just they they signed DACA under uh under under Obama, right? That would allow all the immigrants to come in and take what's left and eat all of what's left as far as the flesh of America by taking the money and giving it to foreigners. That was under DACA. He was continuing what Clinton did with the NAFTA agreement, taking all of our what? All of our uh, clerical jobs, whether it be telemarketing, answering phones for corporations, it was under the NAFTA agreement that Clinton signed all those jobs that were helping the inner city go into the middle class to India, China, and all these other countries. And this is why when you pick up the phone now and you call, uh, whether it be for your cell phone, whether it be for some type of service, a foreigner from another country answers the phone. Well, that folks, that used to be the money that moved our people from poverty off welfare into the middle class. It was Clinton responsible for that with NAFTA and Obama continued it with DACA. And what they're doing with letting immigrants in and all that is to take everything left, knowing that there's a, a, a famine coming that would lead to mutiny and straight civil war for food in the country. Twelve. Verse twelve. 
the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thyene wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beast and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and what and slaves and slaves so the other nations aren't upset with all the resources alone to why they're crying over babylon right they're sad because they're no longer able to come over here and utilize our people for slaves it's talking about the children of Israel. Well, you can't, you can't take advantage of a person who no longer, re, who, 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 you can't take advantage of a people who know that we weren't born to serve the nations. See, if we're Israelites, then we know we were born to be served. Right? So what's going on, we're moving and we're progressing out of captivity realizing that we weren't born to serve the world and the nations are saying well okay we're going to bring the people in who would voluntarily serve us and do what and smile while serving us see so the other nations are going to get upset they're going to be, be, be well the fact that they can no longer come in our neighborhoods and set up under the black and brown stupid coalition ways to have access to our families to destroy the inner cities now they can't come in and just pay one of our young girls and all that. And then leave and all that in our cities and only to go back into their countries or whatever the case might be. Slaves, read. And the souls of men. And the souls of men, read. 14. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee. And thou shalt find them no more at all. That means you're not going to find what? You're not going to find uh, dainty fruits and all that made America great when it comes to ingenuity and all of that. It would be sought for from other countries. And it happened a long time ago when we outsourced all of our jobs to China and had them make all of our resources. What they were doing was adjusting the world for a time in which, what? It would not have to depend on America anymore. So as we begin to wake up and understand who we were, they were like, well, okay, we can't use these people no more. So we can't benefit from the glory of America if the slaves aren't cooperating. <laughs> they're saying that they're the people that they're foundational, that they were here already. They're saying that they created all of the inventions. They're saying that they're God's people. They're even claiming to be the Jews. They're the Israelites. They're Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Simeon, Ephraim. So what we have to do is we have to switch this up and do what? Outsource all the jobs and do what? Deprive America starve her out financially. Now here's your merchants. 15. Verse 15. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for fear, for the fear of her torment, weeping and welling. Read. And saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen, and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls for in one hour so great riches is come to naught and every shipmaster and all the the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off now look at that right slowing up the ships coming in all these countries became rich off of uh sending their resources into america and now they're going to start cutting that off right Read. Verse 17, for in one hour so great riches is come to naught 
and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as strayed by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? What was si what city was like unto America, folks? That's what they're going to say at the very end. Because you know what made America great? The slaves. We created a culture. Not like any other culture within, within the earth at that time. Born out of spirituality, out of longing for our home and the love of our God. Okay. The whole world was looking at us because what? We were left for dead into this country and begin to become the, the light of this country. With our music, Sam Cooke, Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson. Okay, you can't even find this type of culture or talent from the shores we were taken off from. The Most High sent his spirit with us. And it showed forth throughout the whole world that these people that were taken in captivity were the whole time truly the chosen people of God. And guess what? That vibrated throughout the culture of this whole United States. And this is why the United States was great. All the inventions. Hey, you'll be running into another car if it wasn't for us creating the traffic lights. Blood plasma. When it comes to blood transfusions, that was us. Electricity, folks, that was us. Music. The cultured music. Hey, guess what, folks? Even country music started with us. We were the, the original cowboys. Everything they did was stealing from what inherently came through the children of Israel. We were the sheep herders. We were the agriculturalists. We were the people keeping America afloat. We came here with the rice fields because they didn't know how to do rice. China learned how to make rice fields from us in Africa. So the world is going to look at it and say, well, hold up. The spirit of what um, make America what it became is no longer participating as servants. Therefore, America is expendable. Okay, get rid of her. Get rid of her. Because now God's people is taking the glory that should be ours. See? <laughs> 19, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. Verse 19. And they that cast dust on and they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and welling, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. Come on. Rejoice over her, thou heavens, and ye holy apostles and prophets. Rejoice, for rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets in heaven. See? Mm -hmm. So the heavens will rejoice. And I wanted to talk about that. I'm going to give a sheet. Speaking of the heavenly realm and the 24 elders, because it says rejoice over her. So this must be something going on in heaven during the time of John, the revelator and ye holy apostles and prophets read rejoice over her, thou heavens and ye holy apostles and prophets for God have avenged her you on her for the most high Ahia have hath avenged you on her. So when it goes down, folks, it's not for us to sorrow. These same angels are going to guide us through and hedge us through this. Okay. The heavens will rejoice when it's taken down because what? Everyone else benefited from its glory. And now they're leaving the children of Israel for dead. 
That's why they're taking all the money out of the communities and giving it to the other people who did nothing, don't pay taxes, nothing. They're saying starve. See if your God heal and save you through the desolation. And guess what? The only way we'll make it through this, if we, if, 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 an, if we don't have the most high through this, believe it, we're not making it through. The only way to make it through this is have Christ guide us and protect us through this. The only way. So if there's an unbeliever amongst our people who don't believe in God, they better pick up this book and learn of this God. Right? Because the nations led by Satan is, is taking back all of their trinkets, all of their gifts, anything that they can bless us with financially, they're going to take away from us. Okay, that's what they're doing now. Ask P. Diddy. 21. Yes, sir. Verse 21. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And when it's found no more at all, you're going to see the greatness we had in this country right here. Right? Read. 22. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and of trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. Musicians, folks. Hence the reason why they're seeking to actually replace artists with AI. Folks, I'm going to tell you. Anything that gives us glory, they're trying to cut out of the earth. Okay, they're trying to cut out of existence because they know that it's, it's through these gifts the Most High has sustained us to, the, to a degree where they had to pay us for a talent no other people in the earth are born with. So they say, you know what? At the end, no more Whitney Houston's, no more Michael Jackson's. That's why the music have become so stagnant wrong and evil altogether because they did that intentionally. See, they, they did all of this intentionally and the voice of the harpers, musicians and the pipers and the trumpeters read. Yes, sir. Verse number 22 and the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. It's talking about what, folks? No work. No work. You notice they're taking away all the, the jobs and employment. There'll be no more work. So now they're thinking of, since we're taking all the resources from the people, eventually the people are going to revolt. See, since we're taking all of the resources, we need to find a way to slowly get these people to cooperate with what? Slowly being put down because there's no use for them anymore. There will be no job. So eventually if we don't find a way to get rid of them where they can volunteer to their own downfall. These same people are going to fall on government. So, hey. Let's now tell people, take this, take that. Why don't you take this? Why don't you take that? Why? Because really there's no, there's no purpose or, or, or I would say there's no, uh, uh, no jobs that can satisfy people anymore. Right? There's no jobs and they know it. And the jobs that, that, that were for us, they're now giving all the jobs over to those who've come into the country. And I'm, I'm speaking, including Ukrainians and Asians. They want us to look at Venezuelans and all that, folks. It's the Ukrainians and the Asians that have taken everything. When it comes to jobs that would have upward mobility. Read. 
Yes, sir. Verse 23. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and, the br and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. By your sorceries, all nations of the earth were what? Read that verse for me again, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. It says, And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. By thy sorcery, all nations were deceived. How was they able to deceive people, folks? Pharma key. Pharma. Pharmaceuticals. So let's push drugs to keep people sleep. Huh? That's how if people weren't if people were sober, they would have been stood up and realized that, that they're in a boiling pot. But because they had you on drugs, Molly Percocet and all this other stuff, you would even realize that you're in a boiling pot. And it says here, pharma key. That's why every other commercial, there's some type of what? Pharmaceutical being pushed. Look, look what it says here. Tell me that, that the book of Revelation isn't prophetic. And when I look in our neighborhoods, in our supermarkets, all of these people, these foreigners are running pharmacy. Huh? Look at this here. See this? Look at this here. Huh? Look at this here. Especially what our people just came out of. This is what they would use to target our people. According to the book of Revelation. Look at that there. The most I do nothing unless, unless he reveal it to his servants, the prophets. We're laying it all the way out here today, folks. The apocalypse time and the fall of Babylon. And this is why they, they, they have no more use for P. Diddy, Elder Lawyer, because it's over. They wanted to use them to taint the right. culture, taint the music. A cabal of darkness was paid by the elite. The elite entertainment business to come in and erode our culture using rap and gangster rap and all this other stuff to destroy the culture that once inspired our people to fight for family, to stay together. And it says, no more craftsmen or whatsoever craft he shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. No work for Americans. All work is going back to the old world. And then it says, and the voice of the bride, hold up, read the 23rd verse. 23 and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee and we're but living I we're living in a time where no one wants to be married right they have successfully pit men against women to a degree that what the shops and all that that used to sell wedding gowns and all that have has gone out of business. And guess what? Marriage and all that worked for spiritual morale because it gave you a purpose to defend a nation. If you had family, then you would die to defend it. 
But if there's no family, then there's no, uh, you know, there's no incentive in actually defending your nation because there's no family to protect. This is how you implode a country from the inside. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more. Folks, we're in that time already. We're now young men now. They're not seeking to be married anymore. And I don't even know if the young women want to be married. That used to be the ambition growing up as to have your own house and have your own family and to have a name to pass down to the next generation. But if you don't have that, then you don't have young men who are willing now to fight to defend the country. And that's exactly where we are right now. America cannot stand right now against a standing army. Why? What better people or nation to fight against? Where women are in men roles in the military and men have now become effeminate. Think about that. You can easily roll over a nation as such. For what, Elder Lawyer? It says, For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. By pharmacy, by pharmaceuticals, they were able to keep people sleep satanic music and all that as well as drugs and the concoction of drugs along with the music made what made an ideology within America called free sex the sexual liberation and by doing so it eroded the image of God which is family in the music business and the moguls behind the music, I'm going to tell you, this was intentional. It was a religious attack on those who believed in Christ. Because out of all the people to hire into their music business, they would go directly into the black church to cut deals. So that they can tank Christians. So that they can use, see, and I'm going to tell you. There's an added satisfaction using Christians to destroy the world because the people who are higher and sign your, signing your contracts don't believe in Christ. So they have an extra satisfaction or they can go into the church, find one of the, the most talented people in our community to use and taint them to destroy us inwardly. That's a double folks. That's a double thing for them. It's not just to destroy us, but to use those who believe in Christ to destroy us. Folks, and we're talking about the music business, all of that. 24. In her yes, what? Yes, sir. Verse 24. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Look at that. And because at the end of the day, how, how was the heavens viewing her? Because in her was found the blood of the prophets. Tell me they don't know we're the children of Israel. And of the saints. And of all that were slain upon the earth. And this is why I don't trust any initiative they have aimed towards our people. Because I know what their plans are according to what? The Bible exposing their true intentions against God's people, folks. These people are devil worshipers. And I'm glad the Most High have revealed what we're seeing in our time. And the same God who have revealed this information will pull the children of Israel through Jacob's trouble. And Elder Lawyer, thank you for coming in. I'm going to open up the lines in a minute. 515-605-9327.
Is there anything you would like to say beforehand? That's number one. And also, I need you to give some insight to what brothers and sisters can expect in our next Hebrew and Bible Academy that starts in a few weeks. Yes, sir. Well, as far as the comments, uh, we can go straight to the calls. Okay. Um, so there's, there's no, uh, we can go straight there. But as far as the upcoming Academy, what you all can look for is an action-packed Academy with us dealing with some end-time prophecy. As the elders stated throughout the midst of this broadcast or throughout the course of this broadcast, there's a lot of things going on in these times that brothers and sisters have answers on or have questions for that we're going to seek to provide the answers for in this upcoming academy. Now, the theme for this upcoming academy is how to make it through Jacob's trouble. That's going to be the focus of the upcoming academy. Some of the uh, new lessons we're going to be dealing with are Enduring the seven seals, enduring the seven seals, showing you exactly uh, what the seven seals are according to the Bible and what we will need to do spiritually as well as physically to endure those seven seals. Mm. Also, we're going to be dealing with, again, making it through Jacob's trouble. That's actually going to be one of the lessons in which we go through the prophecies of Christ as it pertains to these last days and also showing within that what we must do to make it through those last days. So is all of that and more. If you're interested, go to historytimes.org and all the information you need is there to enroll in the upcoming Academy. Excuse me. Thank you, other lawyer. This has been a spiritual, spiritually impactful broadcast. Excuse me for that. I apologize. Sometimes I had to hit the mute button in between, but uh, mm -hmm. I thank you, Elder Lawyer, for all you do and assisting me tonight. And we're going to open up the calls. And uh, I hope you're ready for another 12 weeks. And it's deep, Elder, yes, sir. Elder Lawyer, it's deep that we were talking about in the Academy this weekend to show you that nothing is by, let me tell you, nothing is by chance. How we were just talking about in the news, Elder Lawyer how they were talking about preparing for some food. Matt shows a warning. This is Newsweek. This is Newsweek, folks. Matt shows warning for people to stock up food ahead of solar eclipse. And we just reported this in the academy. That's why people got to get in this academy. And then out of nowhere, a bridge get ran into that's responsible for making sure all of the equipment as well as fertilizer and all of that for the farmers to be on time to feed America this year. You can't make this up. And then the eclipse falls on April 8th, which is what? Which is the Jewish New Year. As far as first month, leading into the 14th day Passover. It's not our Passover because we know you can't do Passover according to the moon. And if you miss that, make sure you go back and view the lesson. But folks, we're dropping it in this academy, folks. And I'm going to tell you, when it comes to end time prophecy and getting prepared for what's going on, what's happening, you have to realize we, we're living in a world of censorship. Okay? Where they try, no, now that our people are waking up, they're now trying to muzzle or censor information so to not get more people who are in the darkness on the side of righteousness. And this is why I thank the Most High for the Academy, because the Academy, Elder Lawyer, does allow us to operate unfiltered, right? And we pay a lot of Absolutely. money. Believe it or not, we pay a lot of money for it. A matter of fact, I mean, a lot of people don't know this. Folks, we pay over 70000 a year just to be on the platform of Ustream. A lot of people don't know this. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, freedom costs. <laughs> right? So, again, two things are being shown in the P. Diddy thing. The fact that the fall of Babylon is coming through because they have eroded the music and all that and use people like that when it comes to pharmacy, pharmacy and drugs and all that to erode our morality within our community. 
So it's a perfect scenario to use right now with raiding them at a time where at the same time, they just cut off the farmer's resources to feed us this year while everyone is talking about P. Diddy and that's the, that's the flavor of, of the week. We're going to look mm -hmm. up, we're going to look up and realize there's less food on the shelves. So remember, I told you this folks, they don't let a good disaster or a good media thing goes to waste. When they see everybody's looking this way, no, they're doing something just like we've just seen in the cover of night when that ship hit that bridge, hit the foundation of that bridge. So Elder Lawyer, one second, let me play the Academy uh, uh, advert. Please get into the Academy. Go to historytimes.org to enroll. Uh, we have the administration on standby taking enrollments now. So get in while, get in while you still can. We're going to be dealing with in time prophecy, how to make it through Jacob's trouble in the next Academy. And I hope you are a part of it. Okay. So we will be right back with the phone calls and thanks again for, uh, always supporting the gathering of Christ church folks. You know, we love you. I'll be right back. The Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken, and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that He used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited. That's right, you are invited. Go to History Times historytimes.org to enroll. We have the administration on standby, Hebrew news and lessons unparalleled. Okay. And guess what? Go back to the beginning of this lesson, because if you want to know the truth concerning even the holy days, people aren't really following the Passover on the right, uh, uh, the right time of year. Go back to this lesson and look back at it, study with us, grow with us, and above all be baptized in the name of Christ so that we can be hedged, put on that garment, and through that garment, the angels will have us make it through to the wilderness. With that, hold on, let's open up the lines, 515-605-9327. Thank you, elders. I also wanted to go into uh, the, Babylonian, the Babylonian indoctrination uh, of the queen bee, right? How the hive mind is a Babylonian, uh, a Babylonian uh, ideology to be able to use the women under a hive mind to, to run a world. It's a spirit of the queen bee. I want to talk about that in the academy. So, um, Elder Iraq, I'm going to need you to also send me that document you had before showing the hive and all that. And we're going to go into that lesson. Why they are pushing uh, really women to become the workforce of the future. They knew that by them pushing this feminism thing, that it would turn off men altogether from wanting to interact. Men would see a relationship as a bad deal and back out of it altogether. So they, so now they're setting the world for a workforce of women. 
okay? And even when women are at the age to where they would normally retire, nah, they're going to have to continue to work well past their 40s, 50s, not even retiring. That was their plan. And I'm going to talk about that in the academy also. 515-605-9327. Uh, let's see. Let me bring it in here. Uh, blog talk call in. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. Please hold and you will be able to listen to the show. All right, let me turn that down some. Turn Unmuted. it down some here. All right, that's good there. Just turn it down some. Okay, I'm unmuted. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for your participation and viewing with us this evening. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. YouTube has now begun to and continue to do so. Uh, sometimes you go back and they'll unsubscribe you under the cover of night. So go to the main page. Make sure you subscribe if they've unsubscribed to you. Tell others about it. Make sure you hit the, the bell, the notification bell, and let YouTube know that you would like to be contacted or alerted every time the elder, I mean, uh, the Gathering of Christ Church uploads a video or are broadcasting live, okay? So make sure you go to the main page. Go to the main page, please, and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell and hit the notifications and let YouTube know that you would like to be notified when we are broadcasting and or uploading new content. All right, so uh, let's go here. We have Uriah has a question. Hey, Shalom, I'm Elder. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, good evening. How are you, Uriah? Uh, I'll pray to the Most High. I'm doing fine. Um, I was uh, calling in for a question. I know yeah. that you uh, was teaching about the the dope calendar. Yeah. And I had a uh, I had a question about. You said that every season you add an extra a day or one day to divide the season. Yeah, you don't oh, add you don't add a day. It's a day that's there. Uh, to, okay. To separate seasons, right? So the way it okay. the way a season is every thirteen weeks. Uh, let me put it up in front. Hopefully, you can look at your screen to see this as we illustrate as it was illustrated in on our calendar okay let me show you what okay. I'm, let me show you what i'm talking about okay now as you can see here right let me get rid of uh this here as you see on the screen here there's a circle right and in the circle uh -huh. you got what you got 30 30 31 right 30 okay. 30 31 now the one is really the intercalary day that separates the seasons or begin a new season you got it so really in right. act, in actuality right there's really 30 days per month divided by four intercalary days and okay. these and these four intercalary days are what the Bible calls new month or new moons, which is a changing of season. It's quite that simple. Oh. Okay. You so got it? I was gonna ask if I was gonna ask if uh you could explain the scripture in uh Genesis seven. Yeah, the eleventh yeah. chapter. Okay, let, let me go there. Genesis seven, let me get the Bible with you, my brother. All right. Hold on. Okay. Genesis. Let's get it. Genesis 7. The, uh, yeah. Go ahead. And 11? Yes. Okay. Genesis. And it says in the. Okay. You want me to read it? 
Yeah, yeah, you can read it. In the sixth, 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month and the seventh day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open. Okay. And then, so, uh, you know, the date that's given here. So if we were to go to uh, the eighth chapter in the, the third verse. Okay. Let me get it. It's eight and three. Let me read it. And the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the 150 days, the waters abated. Yes, and, uh, and next verse down. Okay, and the, and the ark rested in the seventh month and the seventeenth day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. All right, so so the question that I, I was having was that um, I know that you were saying that these new month days were actually, uh, you know, divided through the season. But what we see here that you okay, know, five okay, months. okay. Well, let me make it clear. I'm not saying anything. The Book of Jubilees and the Book of Enoch make it clear, and I can read it for you. Okay. I'm not saying nothing. Want me to read it for you? Yeah. No, I was just, I was just trying to get a, I was just trying to get an understanding because I know in the Torah it was just bringing this out that you know it was only 150 days in between these five months and you, you were saying every three months that there's an extra day and uh, I'm oh, no. having I, trouble with trying no, to no, no. I think that what you're doing is you are you are fighting against uh, hold on one second you are actually fighting against your doctrinal upbringing because I can easily break this down. It's simple. Okay. Right? And that's why the Bible says that you must learn again, which be the first oracles of God. I'm one. See, I don't have to go through these hoops and try to look at Revelation 7, Revelation 8, and try to, the no. Nah. It's simple. There's 364 days in a year. Right? From, from what I'm saying here in Genesis is 30 days a month. And then, you know, when we go to the book of, uh, no, 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 brother, I, I don't know if you hear me. I'm just asking you how many days in a year at this time period, it was only 360. It wasn't 64 at this oh. time until Hezekiah. Okay. Oh, so that's what you thought that it was 360. But brother, you're incorrect yeah. because there's 360, but what you're not counting is the intercalary days that separate that 360. So you're right. So no, it wasn't until another time because in the book of Enoch, it states it was that way from the beginning unto eternity. So no, it was, it's always been 364 that have never changed since before earth. All right. Okay. So now what you got to do is right. you need to tell me if it's 360 days in a year and the earth time is divided by Sabbaths or Jubilees. When you divide seven into 360, what do you get? Is do you get an even number of sevens? No, but 364 you do, right? You get 52 of those, right? Right. And that and that's what I was uh, asking you, because like when it comes down to the Sabbath of years and 52 weeks and things of that nature, I'm having trouble seeing that scripturally. Now, I can see clearly that it's 30 days a month for all these five months that passed. Now, if I would have seen like maybe if it was uh, 151 days or something like that, then I could see, you know, where okay. this adult calendar was fit. Okay. That's the only thing that I'm having trouble with, with okay. understanding that. Oh, okay, know. well, let me help you out. Let me help you out, young man. 
number one, the Bible also breaks down, and Enoch, not the Bible in of, of itself, but the Enoch and Jubilee makes it clear about the intercalary days. And the problem is you're counting them within the month. Right? So there's 30, right. 30, 30. You're right with the 360. But you must add the intercalary of divisions, which is a day of itself that separates the months. And that's where you're going off. You don't understand how okay. the intercalary days work because they're put there to separate the seasons. So when you see 30, so 30, TV? 30, right? The months stand alone, but the intercalary sticks out. But it still must be counted within the 364 day schedule. Okay, it still must okay. be counted. Or it throws off the time. Even the Bible says, even he told, he, he told Moses, you do 364 days every year, specific 52 Sabbaths. So in case you didn't know math, right? He, he, if, in case you didn't, you didn't know just to add 364. He said, well, listen, I'm going to give it to you another way. 52 Sabbaths, 52 by seven is what? 364. And he says, right, right. he says that will constitute a full year. And he says forever. It was like that from the beginning. And he says it will be like that until eternity. So you can't get, okay. and, and what I did was I illustrated it. Everything that the most high gave us, I made it simple by actually putting it out there for you to see. And see, the Most High is not the mo he's not a, he's not the author of confusion. So what you're fighting against is the programming. And like I said before, uh, young man, the same thing that brothers out there, Hebrews and all these others thought or believe, I used to teach it. I used to be there to count from the slug of the moon and all of that, and count 14 days using the moon and all that. It doesn't work. It's right. wrong. Okay. And that's what I was agree. I was definitely agreeing with you on that uh, matter. I was just saying that you know the thing that I was uh, asking was you know if these days that you said that's in between these three, if they are they their own day that's isolated, so they didn't get yes. counted for in yes. So they didn't. So they didn't exist, or they didn't not no. exist, but they no. just didn't get counted they for in one hundred and fifty. Exactly. Days. Exactly. But they do exist. All right. They have always existed in the intercalary days. Okay. A matter of fact, let me show you. If you will, hold on. Okay. Let me, let me get it. Let's see here one moment. Let me get it here. Let me show you. Right. Now, now this is in the cleft notes of uh, the pseudepigraph of the Old Testament when it comes to the Book of Jubilees. Okay. Now, if you look okay. at if you look at your screen, it says, if you can see here, it says solar year, three hundred and sixty four days. So this is the function right. of this. Is the, hold on, let me get it here so you can see it. Solar year of three hundred and sixty four days. This is the function of the luminaries on the outside of the Earth, right? Solar is the sun. Right. And it says here, and it give you your uh, references, 12 months of 30 days and four intercalary days. 12 months, 30 days, and four intercalary days. Okay? And then it goes into it. It suggests that Jubilees uses two calendars. The second being a parallel 
of egoclastical year, a multiple of mm -hmm. seven, 13 months of 28 of 28 days, right? On the great difficulties right. connected with the calendar for our author and of pre-Christian Judaism, see my comments, all right? So he breaks down, not only does it breaks down what the moon does, which is one calendar, it also breaks down what the sun does. And it's really the sun, the solar, is how we actually keep time. All right. So thank you. And I keep on keep on learning, young man. But yes, at the end of the day, 52 Sabbaths, you can't go wrong. All right. All right. My, my brother, you welcome. All right. Great question. All right. Shalom. Shalom. All right. We have Ross with a comment. Yes, Ross. Oh, no, that's Kayim. One second, Kayim. I'll be back with you. All right, Ross, I'll make sure we do it in order. We're going to get through these, and then I have to eat. All right. Uh, early night tonight, right? Ross has a comment. Hey, Elder, how you doing? Thank you. I'm doing well. You Yourself? Me? Yes, sir. How are you? Doing good. Doing yes. good. Doing good, Elder. As always, wonderful, uh, you know, seeing you guys and listening to you. I think it was a I, uh... As I was listening, I just took some notes, and I was going to go over them real quick. Yeah. So um, in regards to the solar eclipse, just wanted to let you know, Texas has advised that employers treat the solar eclipse like a snow day, uh, asking for essential workers to be the only ones on the roads. And this because a large amount of out-of-state traffic is expected to flow where people can have solar eclipse, and uh, they're expecting that to gridlock traffic. In regards to... Baffle and the influx. That's also where we're where we're seeing that cities expect food shortages because of the influx of people in their town, shutting things down. Also, um, you know, making things less available on the shelves. The National Guards in various uh, states are supp supposedly de uh, deployed at this time due to increasing threats during the solar eclipse. Um, before I found the truth, I was monitoring like the routes. The one in 2017 and how it was supposed to make an X in 2024. And I know, um, I don't know the right word of signs in the sky like solar eclipse, but I, I think that's your, you know, sediments on it. Um, so I was just wondering, you know, when considering Luke 21, uh, chapter 21, 25 through 31, um, what, what's your take on? know what you know because i know you you mentioned uh, i can't remember the scripture but you know that sends a uh, regard a sign in the sky um like you know the small hats over in the middle east talking about red heifers now we see that on the news you know what what's your take on how you think you know our people surrounding us is going to react in the upcoming days all right very good question but let me start off right now by saying yes sir and i mentioned this during the academy it's our god controlling the stars the sun the mm -hmm. moon and all of that as long as i'm down with christ he, he, he can flip the sun moon backwards for us and have it flip have the light whatever he would like to do with it but i know it's my christ in control now and this is why jeremiah states this right i'm going to read this and I'm going to show you why I'm going into the eclipse real quick, because I believe that a lot of these things are done so that they can signal and engineer their own disasters and blame it on an eclipse. See, and I, be, I believe this is signs for them when they'll do certain things to harm the world. Right. So all in all, when you look at uh, Jeremiah 10, and I'm going to read this. Jeremiah 10, right? 10 and 1 says, Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, the Gentiles, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. 
So we're not going to be blown out of whack with what they're saying perfectly going to happen in the earth and all that because of an eclipse and all that, because these are more so, if anything, signs for them to implement something new in destroying the earth. Like, for instance, the eclipse had nothing to do with that ship hitting the foundation of that bridge, bringing it down. But yet we are hearing real time. We're hearing real time in advance. Right. That map shows one of the people to stock up on food ahead of solar eclipse. As if the eclipse is going to cause something. And then it's so here it is. Think about this. The food shortage is because the farmers aren't going to be able to farm like they would normally do because why? That, that the pathway for ships to bring in equipment for farming and all that have actually been interrupted through the bridge falling. So is it the eclipse, the issue <laughs> or is it the fallen bridge? Right? So also they're getting people. This is predictive programming to accept seeing less on the shelves. And this is why they, they show reports of here's a warning for those in Texas, right? Oklahoma. And our church is about to open in Oklahoma next week. Brother's doing a great job there. Ohio, Indiana, right? This is mainstream news. This is Newsweek, Missouri, New York, Kentucky, right? So these are the places that even the mainstream media is telling, just, just look for your, sh your shelves to be, you know, a little bit bare. And we're going to give you a built-in excuse to accept the fact that there's a food shortage. And we told people for years, begin to stock food. All right. Now, the next thing here is what? How did they know this in advance? I showed this in the academy. I don't even care about the sign of the X. I said, of course, that's thigh, which means death. But I know it's a signal for them to do certain things. Right. So here it is. When they say earthquakes and famine. Know that this is some of the stuff they're going to engineer. So if the bridge fell, a famine is being what? Engineered. Okay. Exactly. So for people, I don't want people to look at and say, the, 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 here's some prophetic thing where God is doing through an eclipse and we have to look at mm. this because this sign was there 30 years ago. We're not into that because we're not dismayed at the signs of heaven. What we're telling you is this yes, is putting sir. the dark elite on code on how to run something that will lead to a desolation. So now the whole uh, international body is operating lockstep starting with that time under Geomantra. That's how they deal when it comes to anything, disasters and all that. They deal with Geomantra and they're going to use what? They're going to use this particular eclipse as a tipping point to bring forth something next that will lead to our people suffering in the earth in a nutshell. All right. Yes, sir. Hey, Elder, um, what's your, what's your thoughts on Putin revealing that, you know, crisis was black? Well, the reason, listen, and I'm yeah. going to go into that next week, really, because, okay. it, because at the, let me tell you, there's a, there's a thing called lesser magic amongst the dark elite where they must mm -hmm. tell, they must tell you. So no, listen, so there's no debate anymore whether or not the Israelites are black. So what exactly. Russia and other countries are doing, and guess what? He wouldn't be the first elected official who had a problem with uh, how some of the Western world is running. He's not, he's not the first elected official who began to expose things concerning the plights of black people. Don't forget, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad of Iran said years ago, right? And I'm talking about during the Obama administration, that how can America have the moral high ground? In the earth telling everyone what to do when when how they're treating these people of God who believe in God in America who are black so brother they, they've been dog whistling for a long time 
And now Putin is just dropping the hammer. He's saying, well, listen, we're going to reveal this because there'll be no more debates concerning who the God's people are. Folks, let me tell you, brother, I've been teaching with the Russian icons and I have icons myself since the early 90s. Right. So I remember you sharing a lot of those. Yeah. I, I, I shared some of those with my family. Yeah. Yes, but the whole thing is a lot of nations now knowing that the, the power is going down, their power is waning as Israelites awaken, especially as we come into Christ. And a lot of the Gentiles are, are trying to wash their hands uh, of the blood from the blood of the saints. They, 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 their hands are blood red and they saying, listen, that same God who cursed these people are coming against us. And they're trying to wash their hands up and say, listen, I'm trying to help them. I came out. I told everybody they were the people and I couldn't get on CNN and tell you, but how much better way than to show you the, the pictures that were hidden vaults. <laughs> okay. So a lot of these nations now are exposing what the world always knew but couldn't say. And you could have a lot of these yes, leaders sir. are saying, since, since the pendulum of power is swinging, and it's swinging to our side, brother, believe it or not. They know. I agree. Brother, they know that the invisible, the powers that be, the angels are fighting for us and are binding the gods they serve in a realm war. They know the pendulum is swinging and a lot of them are just trying to be on the right side of a blessing instead of a curse. And I believe they have, you can see it on, they have you can to see, expose it all, but you, you have the last all word. over their face. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, you can see it all over their face when they're, you know, making political statements. Hey, Elder, and I've also noticed that, you know, a lot of people who call themselves Christians, they really tie into what's going on in the Middle East. Um, and they're talking about, you know, like, the red heifers and stuff like that and how, you know, Christians should wake up because it's in the town moves. And we know that's like, that's not, that's not what the scriptures say. So where is this prophecy from red heifers being listen, sacrificed coming from? Listen, it comes down to this, right? It's just what they, what they're doing more so is showing the ignorance of Christians when it comes to prophecy. The last people out here concerning an end day prophecy, right? The last people as a Christians that I would listen to concerning end day prophecy are people who deny that Christ is Messiah. So why should I believe anything else they're saying? So what they're doing is they're just misdirecting ignorant Christians. Instead of Christians looking at Matthew 24 to get directed in prophecy, they listen to the people who are against Christ. So that's proven, that's proved in of itself that these Christians are off the path. Should you be listening to people who yes, are sir. against Christ or listen to Christ in Matthew 24? And where in Matthew, Matthew 24 do Christ say, look for the sign of the red heifer? I've never seen that anywhere, no sir. Thank you. So yeah. you can't make sense mm -hmm. of nonsense. And that's what happens when Christians aren't looking at the Bible anymore. They let the Antichrist, yeah. the Antichrist is deceiving them. Thank you, my brother. Mm -hmm. Great thank call. Thank you, Elder. Have Great a good call, night. Ross. All right, mm -hmm. thank you. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye. Great call. All right, we have Kayem. We're going to just, we're just going to drill through these. And I, brothers and sisters, I'm hungry. I got to eat. So I apologize if I can't stay all night, but I was here nice and early so that I can relax. All right. All right. I'm still fighting. The, the, not really. I'm just, you know, I'm not really sick or anything like that. I feel great actually but you know i still some still some stuff settling in your chest i just got to get that last bit out but uh, i thank you for your continued prayers many people sending me remedies all online and all that saying uh, i'll tell you boy you talking about some concoctions our people were the healers before there was any such thing as pharmacy i'll tell you that someone told me to take some some honey and ginger and and shake it and and and, and throw a few cloves of uh, of garlic in it Heat it up. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. I'm all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Hey, brother, since I ain't going nowhere, right? I'm good. All right, Kayem, talk to me, my brother. <laughs> yes, sir. All praise the higher, Elder. <laughs> hey, Elder, they send you everything, huh? <laughs> but, uh, Elder, that's that move. 
That's that love, sir. Um, Elder, uh, I just wanted to say uh, just a few things. Like uh, for those who have ears, they uh, they should be able to um, to hear because we have eyes. We can see what's going on. Um, Elder, even far as with Puffy and even with the bridges, um, you know, from um, from a standpoint, I see that this is making um, even like like the brother just said, Christians to have uh, to understand what is their foundation. You know what I mean? Because uh, if you don't have Christ as your foundation, you're going to be utterly destroyed, meaning that you have to have the whole matter, uh, you have to have the doctrine, and you have to um, you have to uh, love his Father. Because even Christ said that, you know, he would do the will of my Father, you know what I mean, that, that, he, that he, um, he, he loves. And Elder, um, I was, uh, it's a scripture, um, Ephesians 2.20, and um, I just want to read it real quick so you can go through. Um, it says, and... And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Yeshua Christ himself being the ch- So if Christians don't understand what's going on and, and really understand that they have to read the scriptures and take it as it is written and accept Christ as it is written, the whole matter, not just Paul's or like, the, like what you just brought out, the philosophy that is being, because uh, they are easy to be uh, persuaded into deceit. Because they don't, they refuse to hearken to the Most High or higher. So uh, I see that bridge and all that stuff. From my, uh, from my standpoint, is that the foundation of this world is being destroyed, and yeah. everybody need to get on board this ark. Uh, and, and brothers and sisters, get into that academy because for one, we're going to need our, our leadership. And, and 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 the thing is, you have to put in because uh, your cardinal things is is what is needed to get our kingdom. And that's all I got to say, Elder. Thank you, brother. And I'll see you in the next academy, right? My brother. <laughs> oh, yeah, always. <laughs> all right, all right. Shalom, Shalom. Kayyam. You always Shalom. bring some very insightful, motivating uh, commentary. So I really appreciate you. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, Sunshine. You got two minutes. You got two minutes. Hit it. Come on. Hit it. Cause I got I got a lot of people in front of you. Come on, let's do it. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Oh, there's, oh, there's a while. It's 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 a straight dumbing down to dim the light. We as the children of Israel are onto the world, and and it's an obsessive goal to try to subdue the many gifts and talents bestowed upon us with purpose to praise the Most High, our Father in heaven. And the measures used are indeed crafty and of dark counsel, a slow injection that attempts to crush hope, motivation, and in extreme cases, the very will to live on in such a trying and blessed time. And where the witness of this time is what the prophets long to see. And, and the conspirators have used such tools, so many tools, um, as the so-called social programs to reprogram the communities, turn what we do naturally in, in heavenly order and, and, and righteous creativity to crime. They They've made men and women desensitized to love and family and wholesomeness or feel crazy to desire love onto legacy and rather have them support the popularity concepts of debauchery and liberalism. And, and there's a worldwide um, wicked heart of darkness uh, and keeping of old leaven that's going on with the media's drivel and droves of lies that use, they use to spill <laughs> and spew constant venom into our neighborhoods through more proud hirelings or witches and warlocks. And, and use the churches of the harlots to do so. And the wars continue on down to the squeezing out of the superb health and wellness that we used to have. They've used trickery replacing our um, health and wellness with conjured poisons to nurse sleepiness and confusion so that we can barely function in this earth that has become full to tilt bombardment in Jacob's trouble. But by grace of the Most High, we know that all things work for the good of those who love our father, Ahia, and those who sing for darkness and sing or preach lies um, for Satan, even in signs and wonders. Um, they, they will have themselves muzzled and turned back. It'll, everything will be turned back on them, and, and they'll stand in utter confusion and astonishment at our rise, regardless of the strongest attempts um, but we who by grace sing praises to the Most High are no more abased and will be exalted. And those who seek evil and do wickedness throughout the world will continue to bide their time until the letting is done. And those who seek 
truth unto the kingdom, true Christ, will stand firm, not tossed or dismayed, um, but come what may, an exceeding great army we will be that none would ever be able to deny, because our Father loved Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and so by his promise he so loved us, and so God forbid we stumble, but we will never fall. There it and is. all praise be to the most there high. It is. That's all I wanted to say. I Bless you. They go sunshine, shalom, sunshine, shallow. <laughs> that girl's something else. Hey, she's on. Hey, she's on point though. All right, let's go down the line. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drill through these. Uh, please make your comments short if possible. Keep it within two minutes. Uh, we have Murphy with a question. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon. How you doing? I'm doing well, Murphy. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. So my question is pertaining to um, the crucifixion of Jesus. Yeah. Was he? Uh, so the question is, was he crucified um, on the Passover or after the Passover? He was. He was. He was crucified right before uh, the sun came in, which is Friday night. Right before Friday night came down, the sun. Right before the sun went down and the night was coming in, he gave up the ghost, which is what you would call Friday night. Oh, uh, so he wasn't crucified in the middle of the week. Uh, when you say the mist of the week, I think that's where you're getting confused because the mist of the week, when you look at that week, and I'm going to pull it up here for you, okay? Let me yes, sir. Let me show you. How long have you been following the church? I've been following the church for maybe like three years now. Okay, yeah. So let me show you. Let me but show you. I've been you. observing like the feast and the holy days for okay. like over right. nine years. Okay, because yeah, we've been breaking this down for years, especially when we started going into really drilling home the importance of the calendar and we kept it in many lessons. But since brothers and sisters really started uh, understanding, right, the time, we don't teach it all the time, right? Let me let me show you something. When it when, let me let me show you something here. Right now. <clears throat> Let me show you one second. I'm going to pull up the Bible. Now, when it goes into the resurrection, Matthew 28, right? It says in the end of the Sabbath, right? As it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre, right? But when you look. Yes, sir. When you look at the text, brother, uh, let me make sure I have your name, uh, Murphy. When you look at the text, the word day isn't there. The first of the week. So what does that mean? Well, when you go into, right, the Greek for week, let me show you, that gives you let me pull it up here so you can see it. So it wasn't the first day of the week. And that's what Christians use to say, well, we change the Sabbath to Sunday because it's a first day of the week when it doesn't. In the Hebrew, it's what? It's Sabbaton. Right? The Sabbath, that is the day of weekly repulse from secular avocations. Now, the one I want to show you in particular, hold on, let me show you. Right, we tell you it's an interval between Sabbaths. It says the interval between two Sabbaths. See that? So, what it's happening here is if you have the Passover when Christ was crucified, there's how many intervals between Passover and first fruit? You have seven intervals. So it's telling you the interval between two Sabbaths and between the week is when Christ rose between two Sabbaths. 
You got it? Oh, so uh, Christ rose in the midst of the week. Yeah, it, thank you. Uh, yes. Okay. Between okay. two two Sabbaths. So the confusion with so the confusion about him rising on the eve of of the Sabbath. That's incorrect. Well, it's incorrect the way they're teaching it. Okay. Because you have okay. to think you have to think about this. Right? Friday sundown. How many days you got between Friday sundown? Right? It can't be Sunday, correct? So yeah, it, it can't be Sunday. That's thank you. Yeah. So he if he gave up the ghost, you go Friday sundown to Saturday sundown one day. Saturday sundown to Sunday sundown, two days. Sunday sundown to Monday sundown, three days. So it would be somewhere between Monday and Tuesday, he was already rose. It have nothing to do with Sunday. And when you go into the Greek, Whoa. it becomes crystal clear. Sunday is not even in the oh, mix. Okay. okay. It's between two oh, intervals. Okay. Yeah, there's seven intervals. And it's hard for a Christian to understand it because they don't follow Passover or first fruits. So they don't know about the what? The seven intervals between Passover and first fruits. So when they see a uh, first day of the week there, they don't know it's saying the first interval between two Sabbaths. Right? So they deliberately put the day on it to misguide us. Exactly. They put the word day there, which wasn't in the original text, so that they can actually oh, okay. justify switching the Sabbath from what? From Sabbath to Sunday. And the date and it, and that word day wasn't even in the text. All right. <laughs> yes, sir. Great question. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome, my brother. Bless you. Carol has a comment and or question. Carol. Shalom. Shalom, sister. I'm drilling through, so two minutes. Hit me. What you I got? I know, I know, and I'm baby. I'm making very quick. I'm, I'm ill. I'm, I, I'm suffering myself, <laughs> elder, and uh, I, I've been praying for you as well for a, a speedy Thank recovery. You. Thank you. Oh, and I'm, I just have oh, one I'm quick, strong. I'm good. Quick thing I'm good. To Thank say. you for your prayer, though. Yeah, I'm I know, good. I know, because you, you got, you got the Most High God. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> You're all good. Yeah. Uh, in the name of Josiah. And so do I, because I've been dwelling through this as well. And I know you want to get home and relax. I want That's to eat. what you need. Oh, yeah, I need some Okay, food. this is a quick thing. Yeah. You know, I see I haven't gotten my calendar, uh, Elder, and I ordered it January 8th. Okay, don't worry about that. What I'm going to do right now. Okay. I emailed them again today, though. Oh, don't worry about it. I, I, I got something for you right here. And... And order, order. I got some exciting news. What's, okay, the exci go What's the exciting news? Go ahead. GOCC. I spoke with Deacon uh, right after you guys got back from the uh, awesome, awesome Passover. Oh, wow. It was awesome. And I thank you. You were honest with your word. You said that the ones weren't, that weren't able to make it, that we would be able to watch the whole entirety. Oh, it was really, really awesome. Oh, I, I'm stuff. ready to get I'm ready to get my my hands on the pile. I'm ready to get baptized. So he's uh, oh praise. I went to my I, I did my Zoom class last night uh, for the um, Bible study, and uh, hopefully next week we'll start the uh, the uh, baptism classes. But I'll be going on uh, this Shabbat. Uh, the most he already high. got me set up with, the, with someone picking me up. But um, I just want to say that, and I just want to thank you, and Elder Lord, you're in the whole team. I love you guys, all of you. And uh, I mean, GOCC, you rock. <laughs> all praises. And, uh, and, I, and I will be uh, in the academy. I love, I love the academy. That's where, that's where the most high worked with me, the most with the academy, that, that grounded me, and I am grounded. And I recommend anyone, Please get into the academy. Oh, thank you, sister. You won't yeah. regret it. 
Let me tell you, you I was. Feel better. Let me tell you, sister. I was a. Uh, I was. I, I was under withdrawals, having to keep one week off between the Passover. And <laughs> <laughs> I love the academy. It's it's just an expansion of so itself. You know right? we were. You know we were. You yeah. guys. You guys were having a ball. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but hey. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. But one minute. One minute. Let me you guys have were you. truly missed. Thank you. Let me make sure I have your phone number right here. I'm looking at it now, right? All right. Yes. So you'll you'll receive a call between tonight and tomorrow, Sister Carol. Well, and not, don't let it be you. You get you some rest. Oh not no, you, no it's, else. <laughs> it's going to be Brother James because he's responsible for the administration okay. of sending out the calendars, and he's going to okay, ask you okay. your address, and we're going to overnight it to you. Okay. We'll okay. Overnight. Okay. All right. Fair enough. All right. Fair Thank enough. All right. Shalom. Please Shalom. get some rest, Elder. We love I you. I will. Thank you. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> okay it's confirmed he got the message get her done all right uh javon has a comment we're going to try to drill through these yes javon Javon, Javan. Okay, no one's there, so let's go to the next. Hello. Yes, how are Hello. you? Sir? Yes, how are you, sir? Javan or Javan? Hey, good evening, Elder. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. Thanks good evening, for. Good evening, Elder. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. What say you? Okay, I'm gonna make this one very, very quick because I know what time it is. Uh, so it's interesting that you brought out what you brought out tonight about the uh, the bridge. And if you ask me, I think this is Bill Gates' way of, uh, I guess, use it as like an execution move. Well, I well, a couple months ago what, what, what a whole, okay, up. okay. Let me say something real quick because they have our channel, our channel on serious, oh, serious watch. I'm sorry about so, that. So, so we can't. I'm sorry about we, that. We, yeah, no, it's fine. We just can't, in good faith, allow an accusation to be put out there unfounded. So. Uh, we can speculate on Patreon okay. <laughs> if we would like, but not on this because believe it or not, yes, believe it or not, I, one of my channels got this channel got strike last year because they said that when I brought out something, I was bully, oh, I was bullying Bill Gates. So and and oh, wow. yeah, and they said that, <laughs> and it said in the uh, in some of the information that he's a protected figure, right? Oh wow. Yeah, it was in the notes of, I'm like, well, hold up. I'm just telling you what's going on out there. It was like, nah, <laughs> nah, he's a protected figure. And and Bill Gates, it says you bullied Bill Gates. So I'm, I'm leaving him alone on, on this channel. All right? Okay, yes, sir. Hey. Yes, sir. So uh, I'll make it really quick. What I will say is uh, we don't have the percentage of farmers that we used to have, you know, in, in, the, in the country. So with this happening... It's going to hurt and, and, and hit it real hard. I think it's going to hurt them a lot harder than it would have maybe 20, 30 years ago when we had more farmers. Yeah, but I think the most time that we have farmers even within the church, you know, and, you know, we got some farmland and, you know, we're going to do what we can. We're going to preserve what we can to help as many as many people as we can. So it's what I would say brothers and sisters have to start throwing some seeds on their own gardens and just making it work. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? They can find an old lot somewhere around where you live at and just throw some seeds out there and come back and get some potatoes and onions. Uh, some of that stuff that grow under the ground, yes, you can just throw your seeds out there under there and you get and you can go through and just pick up your own food sometime. Don't let no one know you, you got it over there. And hey, make it work. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, my brother. And I want to thank you for everything, Elder. You know, I've been following you since it literally uh, I'll probably say about five or six years. So when it comes to all the dates and kind of, I've never had questions. Israelites, they need to stop searching and surfing YouTube like it's like it's a television. You know, that's, yeah. that's the issue. You know, surfers, and that's why they have so many questions. Well, it's okay. That's what, that's what I'm here. That's that's what I'm here for. And I just want brothers brothers and sisters to know that I'm not here to fight and debate something I know already. You know, and uh, it's just yes, that sir. they probably didn't understand the history of the fact that what they're what they're fighting for. I'm a place. I'm a place you on hold there. I don't believe that. 
I don't think they have the history to know that what they're defending, I, I was actually following myself. Okay. And I was actually counting from the slither of the moon and all these things years ago to determine Passover. So they probably didn't know that where they are, I was there decades ago and you know, and I'm not bragging. It's just the truth. I know what they're trying to bring forth. I know why they want to bring it forth. And it's time for them to open themselves to something different. We were lied to. And that's all. All right. Uh, let's go down the line. Only got a few more to go through. Grace has a comment and or question. I'm going to answer about two or three more. And then that will conclude our broadcast for this evening. And for those who, di who didn't make it in, you can just call back on Patreon day. And I'll be more than happy to talk <laughs> with you when we unpack. When we unpack this coming Friday, Candace Owens' conversation with the rabbi, okay? We're going to unpack that this Patreon. You don't want to miss that one. All right. Okay. Grace has a comment and or question. Yes. Shalom, Elder. Shalom. Um, how are you? My comment. Hi. I'm great. Uh, I find it interesting how the bridge opened on March the 23rd in 1977 and then like 47 years later on march the 26th that's <laughs> interesting closed. yeah right yeah i mean we're talking five years to build it 47 years later it's closed they opened it you know and then they closed it <laughs> and so that's my comment <laughs> uh, hey. and and my question <laughs> do it oh well well you have to realize strategically where some of these bridges are located too and if you notice, yes. like if you're yes. going to just say if there's an emergency situation where troops are operating, right? On a free uh -huh. on a free country like America, you have posse comitatus where you cannot have a standing army against citizens, police and citizens within its borders. But if a bridge is gone mm. and something happens, then when they go through the tunnel, it's almost like going through what? A stop toll. Mm -hmm. Like they would have to, yeah. to like, like a control, a control bridge so they can actually approve or not let, you know, to actually uh, funnel people as you go through like a military would do. Right. Like one of those stop uh -huh. things they'd be doing with, with the military and all that, or the police, like they used to do in the inner cities when they would just have these random uh, tests for alcohol and all that at night. Well, now they don't have to worry about that because there's no bridge. Everyone will be funneled through almost like a military type of screening put in place. And don't forget, there was a bridge that fell not, fell not too long ago in North Philadelphia all of a sudden. And that happened early in the morning while everyone is at work around the same time. I don't know if y'all remember Ooh. that. And all of these bridges Ooh. are strategically, conveniently, right outside of poor neighborhoods. So I'm keeping my eye mm -hmm. on that. I'll keep my eye on that. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you, sister. Absolutely. I, yeah. And my question, quick question is, oh, and by the way, I'm enjoying the Academy. I'm signing up for the next one. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Uh, I was going to ask, um, yeah, I was going to ask when there might be a next uh, baptismal or something like that. I, I, I uh, without getting into the details, I, I certainly want to. I've been trying to do that, and I missed one recently. Um, I, I was, you know, anyway. So I, I was wanting to see what you could do for me on that. Oh yeah, it's checkpoints. You, you, you write Judah Black. It's, it's the checkpoints they used to set up. So this is a convenient way of doing checkpoints without implementing them. I'm glad you used the word, and you know, it, it just, you know, it missed me for a second. Now, when you talk about baptism real quick, what city and state, where, where do you live? Oh, I'm in Texas. Okay. And I, I've been, well, like I said, I didn't really want to talk about um, online about oh, that. Okay. But well, I was just trying well, to. Well, let me tell you, sister, just, send, just send us an email showing your location, right? Gathering as one, okay. the number one at AOL.com. And we'll and, and okay. one of the elders will get back with you or bishop uh, to get, you know, to put okay. you, you know, to get you started towards baptism. That's no problem. We'll help with that. Perfect. I will do that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. And because you're in the academy, okay. you can also send a note to the academy 
-hmm. to the academy okay. uh, email and we can we can funnel it that way okay. either way so do both and you know so that we can get someone to you as soon as possible all right oh. sounds great i'll do it all thank right thank you, you sir and thanks for being a a, 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 a loyal <laughs> academite thank you <laughs> <laughs> I, I i love it all i right. love it and i'm i'm anxious <laughs> thank you thank you so yeah all I'll right. see you on Sunday. <laughs> Thank you, sister. I'll see you Sunday. All right. All right. Tell them on. All right. <laughs> Gabriella, going down the line. Gabriella. Thank you, sister. Gabriella. Shalom, elder. Shalom. I want to eat. I want to eat some food. I'm hungry, but <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, I'll sacrifice for y'all these na let, next few phone calls. Talk to me. I really appreciate it. So I do have. Um... So same question with the previous sister. I'm located in Miami yeah. and I sent an email to you guys a few days ago asking if you guys have a location here and also if you'll be providing baptism in our area. Yeah. But I haven't received any feedback just yet. Okay. Don't worry about that. We got something right here. All right. Hold on. Boom. Here it is. We have to get these saints ready. Because once we're covered with that baptism, get ready for that Babylonian bounce. So, you know, <laughs> so, I, I, <laughs> so I'll tell you what we'll do. Send an email to G-O-C-C -C South at Yahoo.com. Isn't it Yahoo, Elder? Lawyer? Yes, sir. G-O-C-C -C South at Yahoo.com, sister, and just mentioned that you spoke to me online. You're in Miami. You would like to be baptized. And I'll have um, I'll have Elder Fresnel reach out to you. Abinazar reach out to you, all right? All right. All right. Bless you. Yes, perfect. And I did have one comment, actually. Okay, go for it. Um, just based, based on the uh, information as I'm listening, it's, it's as if, like, the elite, their plans work in tandem with the Most High because— who else would fulfill the prophecies in the Bible if not the elite? I don't know if that like really makes sense, but when I sit and I think about um, what the global elite is doing, how they have to orchestrate certain events in order to fulfill Bible prophecy, it's it's like everything that they're doing is destructive. So it just yeah. it's like a balance of energy, if that makes sense. I well, don't know, well, like how I'm well, how my mind is well, perceiving well, it. Well, that's one way of viewing it, but the other way of viewing it is when Christ was talking about what would come upon the world in the end days, he was actually tipping us off to what the enemy would be doing. Right. So yeah. a lot of people think when they see these things, Oh, that's God. And that's God doing this and all that. No, Christ was letting us know the enemy is going to be doing these things. He's going to be causing mm -hmm. friction where there's no peace in your house. Like it was during COVID when some families W was agreeing with their solution and others weren't that wasn't that was an outside force causing conflict in the home and then when he says earthquakes in diverse places like when they started fracking for natural gas in the united states and come to find out a lot of these places where they are fracking for natural gas right they started breaking open the earth and now there's earthquakes in these same areas so what <laughs> so so what was christ was talking about because don't forget at the end of the prophecy he talked about how they would come against our people in a desolation. Mm -hmm. Well, that happened in 70 AD, right? So he's get, he's tipping us off to what the enemy is planning to do to get rid of Jacob. So in a nutshell, from, right. from that, from, from that prophetic scenario, it's understood, right? These are prophecies of how the enemy would continually conspire against the children of Israel. And Christ was tipping us off concerning some of their their ideologies or some of their plans against us so when you see this uh, when you see this because he he's telling us what the enemy is going to do all right so in that way yeah. and in that way a lot of these prophecies on their part is self-fulfilling it isn't natural these are the plans that they have to come against the children of israel all right yeah, and it's like it's leading everyone to the lake of fire who's participating. So, you know, with all the elitists who are participating, don't they know that the devil is going to lose by default? You know, it's, well, you well, know sister, there just seems to be well, well, illogical. Sister, well, sister, it's like this, though. Yeah. This is what happens when you sacrifice your morality. It leaves you. 
these people have done so much evil. They, they become soulless. That's number one. Number two, mm-hmm. number two, uh, there's a scenario in which under the Luciferian doctrine, they are taught that Christ loses in the next war and that Lucifer will actually set up his kingdom in heaven and they'll rule throughout the cosmos under the Luciferian doctrine of the elite. So they believe Christ loses the next war, the war of Armageddon. Wow. So they got a reverse Bible and a lot of them believe it. (laughs) Wow. So, (laughs) right. So that's where, that's it also. They've been indoctrinated because think about it. You got people who are are Satanists who believe that what they're doing and all of that is uh, just just regular old religion, bloodletting, dealing with with all types of sexual perversions and all these other things. It's a part of their religion. So if they become reprobate, they become soulless. And then you got the elite telling them, well, don't worry about it because here's a different Bible, the Luciferian Bible, where the Baphomet rules from heaven. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's really, it, it's delusional. And I would Absolutely. say that the Absolutely most delusional. high, led, the, most, <laughs> the most high led me to your, um, to your platform most recently, because I've actually experienced something that I wish I would, I can actually share with you because it wasn't until I got the right truth coming from, your platform, okay. like the ends, every all my loose ends were tied basically. Like all spiritually, I was searching for specific answers because I grew up in a Christian church. You know, that's pagan. So everyone is more like fluffy and airy. They're not really getting into the meat of the Bible. They don't really understand it. So when you actually present them with a spiritual situation, they don't know how to resolve it. So it wasn't until I kept asking the Most High, just show me the truth. And I found videos that correlate to my personal life that okay. helped me answer so many questions. And I've been led back to the Most High. And that's why I'm inquiring about baptism okay. and um, a church in my location, because I really want to be connected to the right body, you know, because I've been under a spell for most of my life. And, yeah. you know, I woke up. So well, hey, I'm just really grateful. Sister, the awakening, what happened to you happened to all of us. Welcome. Yes. Welcome to the body of Christ. <laughs> We're going to answer that. And <laughs> hey, you'll be celebrating Passover with us next year. If it be the most eyes will. Right. So, uh, hey. Yes, absolutely. Welcome. Welcome to the work. All right, I'm going to place you on hold. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. And we want to make sure someone reach out to you. And uh, hey, that's how the Most High is uh, gathering his people, right? Bringing us together. Uh, nine to nine, we have Joseph with a question. Good night, Elder. Good night. Good night, Elder. Good. How are you, Joseph? Yeah. A uh, question. A question for you. Um, how you uh, sum up Babylon, the great to be consist of America and not the whole world itself? Okay, this is how. That's my question for you. Very, very great question, right? Right, because the world, in essence, is Babylon, right? So so it's not either one or the other. But why in specific we're talking about America, right? When you go to Psalms 137, right? Yes. Right? Right. Because Rome, the whole religious system under the papacy is Babylonian. Right. So Italy is Babylon, too. But uh, but why in specific is it talking about the fall of America when you read Revelations 18, where they are beholding her? When you look at Psalms 137, let me read it real quick. All right. Psalms 137. Yeah. Right. And you know, uh, you sound uh, Caribbean, right? Are you Caribbean? Yes, sir. I, I am Caribbean. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. Yeah. So the whole deal is, yes. you know, Cari- you know, Benjamin have been talking about the fall of Babylon for how long? And Babylon by the river of Babylon. We sung about Babylon or the fall of Babylon in our Negro spirituals over here, right? But when you go into yes. Psalms one thirty-seven, check this out. 
Yes. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Right? Now, how do you know this thing? Well, well to, to, to us, Zion is the Ark of the Covenant. That, that's what we uh, sum that up to be. Zion. Uh, we uh, remember uh, Zion. Okay. You're going to have to work with me because I can't teach and fight against your indoctrination, too. Because, no, 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 oh, okay. Saying. Because what I'm, I'm saying, saying is, yeah. where does it say that Zion is the Ark of the Covenant? Because the Ark of the Covenant represent uh, 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 Zion. Okay. All right. Uh, well, sir. The, the, um, okay. The, I need, I need you. Of God hey, bro, hey, brother. I need you to oh. relax for a second and listen to me real good. Right? I'm trying well, to. You got something so I, I answer you. I know, but in order for me to, in order for you to answer me, you have to answer my question. Right? You're not answering my question. I mm -hmm. ask in specific. Where in the Bible that states the Ark of the Covenant is Zion? Where can I find that in the Bible? It's, it, it's in the Old Testament because that's where the Spirit of God dwells okay. in, in the Ark okay. of the Covenant hey, and so, God sir, is Zion. Sir, mm -hmm. I'm not even going to get to proving America's Babylon the way this is going because I don't, I'm asking you, where in the mm -hmm. Bible again? I got a Bible in front of us. Where in the mm -hmm. Bible that states the Ark of the Covenant is Zion? Where? Well, they, that will be a lot more detail because you say you don't have to go to eat. So I don't want to stay on that. Okay. Uh, I would rather uh, talk about what, what? Babylon the Great. Okay, sir. Because you speak of all the stuff that, that's in her. So. All that stuff that the, the, the Revelation 18. Sir, I'm going to place you on hold. Okay? Because when you begin to over talk without edifying, that confuses people. The answer to that, sir, is that there is no place in the Bible that states that Zion is the Ark of the Covenant. That doesn't exist. And then it leads to another question. If it doesn't state that, why are you saying that? Because I only deal with what? The Bible as it is written. The Bible states, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. You can't philosophize your way through this Bible and hope that someone will understand what you're saying. The Bible wasn't meant to be understood that way. Okay? So I'm going to give you another shot. Please do not over talk so that we can edify because this is not a conversation between you and I. We need to edify for the people who's listening. And we can't do that if questions aren't answered exactly. So I'm going to try it once more. Okay, Joseph, I had to place you on hold. Okay? You with me? Yeah. Okay. I only need you to answer specific questions without running into something else. Is that possible? All right. So there is no place in the Bible that states that the Ark of the Covenant is Zion, is it? It does. It does okay. represent okay. Zion. Okay. How do you prove that? Because the reason for that is that's where the Spirit of God dwells. Uh, sir, God is I'm going to ask you, sir. I'm, sir, I'm going to ask that, you. That's well, I am you. Uh, no, no. You oh, listen. Mm -hmm. There's a Bible in front of me and I'm not going to allow you to answer me outside of the Bible because that's where the Ark of the Covenant is spoken at within the book itself. So you want me to believe what you're saying it is or do you want the Bible to tell me that's what it is? Because I believe that that's how both of us come on one accord. If we can both see what we're saying out of the word, what say you? Don't you think that's how we come on one accord? So, so can I ask uh, what does sir, Psalm mean when he say who remembers sir, sir, Zion? Can I listen, ask you that then? Li listen, it okay. means what it means, but I'm not going to go someplace else because I can. I have to show you the error of how you're viewing the Word of God. You're not the first one who've come with this ideology. I know where it's from. Okay, I know the origin of it, but I'm trying to have you. Re 
understand you need to break your programming, sir, because you're wrong. Right now, I have the Bible up for both of us. And when I go Ark of the Covenant, I taught on the Ark of the Covenant this weekend. The Ark of the Covenant, right, in search, and I type in uh, Zion, right? It comes up and says, yes. it says what? It says absolutely nothing. It says this cannot be found in the Bible. Zero verses found in the search. Okay. So now. Yeah. So let's first agree that there's no place in the Bible where it says the Ark of the Covenant. Zion is, is the Ark of the Covenant. Let's agree there. All right. Okay. I'll go with you. Thing. Thank you. Say. Thank you. Now. How do now now going back to the original question you asked me? How is it that America is Babylon? Especially the city that all the merchants come to to glory in. Right? This is why immigrants and everything else like to come upon America because it's the greatness or the beacon of the world. Now, let me read. This is speaking of remembered Zion. Zion is Israel. It's God's people. That's who Zion is. We hang our hearts upon the willows in the midst thereof. That means, now listen, listen, listen. For there, they that carried us away captive, that's future, our people going into slavery. This couldn't have been during David's time because we weren't in captivity at that time. For they that carried us away captive required us a song. That's your Negro spirituals. And they that wasted us required us mirth. They required us to smile and dance while we were entertaining them. Saying, sing us one of those songs of Zion. Songs of Zion, right? Like what Barb Marley sung, songs of Zion. We sung, Moses, let our people go. Swing low, sweet chariot. But when you go to the willows, when you go to the willow tree, it so happens the willow tree in of itself has a name. The willow tree was called the Babylonicus. The willow tree is called the Babylonicus, right? And you can find these in only two separate areas on earth, either in the Orient. There's a few in the Orient, which is in Asia, but the majority of these trees you can find down South of the Americas. I know I grew up down South. My family is from down South and the willow trees drapes over and you can hide yourself. They drape so low. And guess what? The, the willow tree is called the what? The Babylonicus, the Babylonicus, right? So even the tree itself states that that particular tree is, has some uh, uh, connection to Babylon. Now, what happened while we were in, we were led away captive. Let me finish reading, right? Yeah. It reads, we hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof for there that for they that carried us away captive. What did they require? Though it's I tell you right here for there, that means a new land. They that carried us away captive. They were the white people or the Edomites required us a song. And they that wasted us required us mirth, smiling and dancing for, for those who've enslaved us. Saying, sing us one of those songs of Zion. That's Negro spirituals. Where was Negro spirituals created? Was it created anywhere in the earth or was it created 
in the South where our people was serving in America, sir? Okay. Okay. Now, more. How okay. shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget the old Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy, not Africa. We're from Jerusalem. And then the Bible states it even highlights the people who would be responsible for carrying us away captive. Okay. Remember, O oh Lord. The children of Edom. These are Edomites who are responsible for it. In the day of Jerusalem who said, raise it, raise it even to the foundations thereof. So we know the Romans are Edomites. And then it, dis it distinctly, distinctly say, well, this is not just a regular Babylon. This is old daughter of Babylon. All right. She's the daughter of the ancient Babylon. That's America. Who art to be destroyed. Okay. So. Keep on coming through. Keep listening. And uh, you'll realize. It's not just the world being Babylon. This actually is honing in on something. And magnifying something more prophetic. Outside of just the world being Babylon. It's speaking of the daughter of Babylon. You can't say the world is Babylon. And then it says okay. Well who's the daughter of Babylon then? That's America. America has influenced the world. That's the daughter. Well, thank you, my brother. You have a great night and uh, continue to learn with us. We're getting someplace. All right. Shalom. My, all brother, right. my brother from the same mother. All right. I'm sorry I cannot take any more calls. I have to eat. I'm past the hour. May the most high be with you. If I miss your call, don't worry about it. Come in for Patreon and I'll be more than happy to continue where we left off. Academy in a couple of weeks. I want to see you there. Historytimes.org. And through that, the theme is how to make it through Jacob's trouble. It's time. Go to historytimes.org. If you want to support us, you have it right there. Dollar sign, GOCC, 144, donate if you have Cash App. If you don't have Cash App, it's okay. Go to gatheringofchrist.org under donation. And I'm sure there's an option there that you can help support this work because there's much work to be done. With that, may the Most High be with you. His name is Ahaya. We're the children of Israel in the name of Yeshia, the children of Israel, and we're back. Thank you, other lawyer, for all you do to help support the work. Young man, you can get some rest. And uh, you all have a pleasant evening. Shalom. Yes, sir. Shalom. Good night. The Arabs and Africans told us at gunpoint together our wives and children that sold us in the belly of these great ships we traveled in fear by the rivers of Babylon we found our brothers here a high gatherer Ashes in Colombia oh. Ruben from Australia mm -hmm. it's a cop the Mexicans Back is right, yeah. Zebulon from 
Gathering is by air.